In today's video, I'm gonna build an entire sales funnel inside of WordPress using the Funnel Kit plugin for WordPress and Bricks Builder. Now, if you've never heard of Funnel Kit, it allows you to go and build entire sales funnels from within WordPress. You don't need click funnels or all those other different software as a service. You can do it right here inside of WordPress. We're gonna be using Bricks Builder as the page builder that we use to build the pages within our funnel. So before we get in and start building this funnel, let me show you the end result. So here we are on the sales page and the offer that we're promoting today on the sales page is gonna be our three best-selling products in our beauty brand are on sale, but you can only pick one. So they land on this page, they see what the offer is about, they go down, they can read more about it. We go down, this is where they select which product they would like to get, because we say you can select one product. It's a big discount, limiting to one per customer click add to cart to add this to your order. And then we can go down, there's some testimonials, a little bit more about this, a testimonial down here, the money back guarantee, that sort of stuff. Now there's a couple of things happening on this page that I'll show you how to set up today inside Bricks Builder. So this button, if you click this, it automatically scrolls down to where they have to select the deal they want. And once they select the deal, so let's just say we select the anti-aging cream and we press add to cart, that'll redirect us to the next step in the funnel, which is our checkout page. And if we go down a little bit, it's pre-selected that for us. So I'll show you how to do that as well. Now, again, this design is all built using Bricks Builder. In just a second, I'll show you what that page looks like in the Bricks Builder editor. But if we have a look here, they'd put in their details. They could choose a shipping address if they want. So standard WooCommerce stuff. Then we're gonna have a multi-step checkout. So we can click proceed to next step and that will take us to the shipping step where they sh they select their shipping method they can put in their coupon code then we go proceed to the final step and then this is where they'd go and add their credit card details i don't have that linked in the demo website and then from here they'll click place order so once they click place order here we take them to the next step in the funnel which is that first upsell so it says wait here's a one-time offer again built using bricks builder we're going to output the featured image there the name of the product the button for them to add this to their order and charge their credit card again, or they can say no and skip this offer. So going down, this is gonna be the design that we recreate. And then if we go up and we say, no, we don't want this upsell, then we go to this downsell, again, built using Bricks Builder. And if we go down, we might say, yes, add that to our order. That says it's been added. And now we're taken to this thank you page again, which I'll show you how to build using Bricks Builder. So this is what that looks like there. I'll also show you the more advanced things here on the page where it says my name, because remember from the checkout form, we put in our details or your customer puts in their details. We can output their name here on the thank you page. We can output their WooCommerce order number here. We can output and say an email has been sent to and then the person's email address. Again, all details that we captured on the checkout page, we can output here in the page. It just personalizes it. And I think it's really cool to do that sort of stuff. The little details really matter. Now, coming back to the steps in the funnel, I'll show you what we're going to be creating. So if I go to the sales page and I click edit with bricks, so this is what this page looks like in Bricks Builder. So we'll go down and again, it's just exactly what you'd expect. It looks like what I just showed you on the front end, but there's a couple of different things that I cover here inside of Bricks Builder. For example, if we click on this, because we reuse this section on the upsell pages, we've saved this as a saved element inside of Bricks Builder. So I, I run through how they work in detail. Also, while we're here, if we click on the add to cart buttons here, so the anti-aging cream if I click on the add to cart it says it's going to an external URL and then it has this URL which is our website so it actually links through to the checkout page but then we have a URL parameter on the end that pre-selects that product on the next step in the funnel so I'll run through how that works so that's a funnel kit feature that you're probably going to want to know and I'll show you how to do that inside of Bricks Builder plus many other things this is just one of many examples that I'll run through today in today's video for every design I'll also run through the mobile responsive layout and run through how to best tackle that. But I'll get out of this and then we'll go to the checkout page and I'll edit this with Bricks. So as you can see, this is all designed inside of Bricks Builder. We're using some short codes here to output the funnel kit checkout forms. But besides that, everything else is designed with Bricks Builder. So I go through how to adapt your layout to all the different screen sizes. Coming to the one-click upsell design. Now we actually do something here in Bricks Builder where we create a template inside of Bricks Builder and then we apply that template to the post 
post type that is used for the offers, the upsells. So if we go into our admin menu area and I go to bricks and then I go down to templates, you can see that we have this one time offer upsell and it's applied to all the single post types that are the post type offer. And if I go edit with bricks, so this is that upsell template. And as you can see, it's all designed using bricks builder. So I'll run through how to do that. All the mobile layouts as well. And because this is a template that we're applying to the offer post type, if we go and have a look at some of these modules over here, we have a short code module here that outputs the product image slider. So this is a funnel kit short code that we add into our bricks template. And so when it goes to load that one click upsell, it gets the images of that product in the offer and then outputs them into this template. Same with the product title. So when the page tries to load, it checks what product is assigned to the offer and then it will output the name of that product here. That's why we can have that one template applied to multiple offers. The benefit of using the template obviously is that we can come up to here and make a change in one place. Like if we wanted to adjust the text color to a red here, we could save that and then that will apply it to this upsell here and this upsell here, which makes managing everything so much easier inside of WordPress. Now, the reason that I set out to do today's video is because I've just moved over to using Bricks Builder and I've been building sales funnels in Funnel Kit. And the downside of that is that Funnel Kit, if we go to Funnel Kit and Funnels and then add a new funnel, Funnel Kit has pre-made designs for Elementor, Divi, Gutenberg and Oxygen, but not for Bricks Builder. For example, if we go to Elementor and now we see the pre-made designs, if we scroll down just a little bit, there's a design design called Rosetta. So if I preview this, and as you can see, it looks a lot like the design that I just showed you. So that's actually what today's video was about. We're going to recreate this design that comes out of the box with Funnel Kit for Elementor. We're going to recreate that with Bricks Builder. And so that means we need to design from scratch using Bricks Builder and then add the short codes into there, which is what today's video is all about doing. Because I myself hadn't actually done that. And I thought it was an interesting test to go through and go through the process and see not only for myself how it works, but document it to show how you would go and do it for yourself. Because I know a lot of people are swapping over to Bricks Builder and I know a lot of people are moving into the Funnel Kit ecosystem. And I thought it would be a good video that would answer a lot of questions that people might have. So on that, obviously today's design is not my design. So thank you to the Funnel Kit team for putting this one together. This is one of my, probably my favorite design that they've released. And I think in today's video, we do a pretty good job of recreating that inside of Bricks Builder. So enough about this intro, let's get into to today's video and start recreating this Elementor design inside of Bricks Builder in the Funnel Kit plugin. So let's go ahead and get this website ready for us to build our sales funnel. So here in the dashboard, I'm going to go to appearance and then themes. And no surprise, we need to upload the Bricks Builder theme. So I'm going to go add new and upload theme. And I've just downloaded it here. So I'm going to install the parent theme and I'll go install now and then go back. And then we're going to add a new one and I'm going to install the child theme. So I'll just drag that into there and we'll go install now and we'll activate this one and I'll just go ahead and add my license key so Bricks is all set up. I will say if you're watching this and you don't already have Bricks Builder make sure you do consider getting it before November 11th because they are increasing their prices so if you go to their website and click up the top here it will tell you what it is so the starter is $79 and it's $199 if we go up the starter is going to go up to $99 so a $20 increase and the ultimate is going to go up by $50. So just make sure you don't miss out on that. If you are interested, you know you're going to use Bricks Builder. Don't wait until after the 11th. So with Bricks Builder installed and activated, let's go to plugins and add new. And we're going to install WooCommerce. So install now and activate. And I'll just quickly enter some random details here. So WooCommerce is all set up. So let's go to plugins and add new. So we've got Bricks Builder the theme. We've got WooCommerce. Now we need to actually add the plugin that's going to allow us to build sales funds. Now, the plugin that I recommend you check out to build sales funnels inside of WordPress using WooCommerce is called Funnel Kit. Now, they currently have a deal going, so I'm not sure if you're watching this video, it's still going, but I would suggest checking it out if it still is. It's a really good deal. It's 45% off currently. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below, but I've already downloaded the Funnel Kit plugin to my computer. So I'm going to go ahead and just upload that there. So the way that it works is you have the light version, which is this one here. So I'll drag the free version in and we'll go install now and add activate the plugin. And now that's installed and we have this new menu item on the left hand side. But to be able to do a complete sales funnel where after the checkout form, we have upsells and downsells, we need to purchase the pro version. So again, that's going to be linked below. So this is the light version.
version here. Let's go add new and then upload plugin. And I'll just upload the pro version that's down here in my computer. So I'll drag that in there and I'll go install now and we'll go activate plugin. So that covers setting up our website, installing all the plugins, the bricks theme. Let's get into actually going and creating the sales funnel. So to be able to create this sales funnel using bricks builder, we need a design that we're going to be creating. So I'm not going to go ahead and design it here. Although I went to university for four years design these days, I don't really enjoy doing the design. I'm more the business technical side. I like doing that sort of stuff. So we're going to do the following. We're going to look at the funnel kit plugin that we just installed that builds the sales funnels. They have pre-made designs that come for Gutenberg, Divi, and some other page builders. We're going to have a look at one of them, and then we're going to go and recreate that inside of Bricks Builder. And in the process, you'll not only learn how to use Bricks Builder maybe faster, maybe that could be a benefit there, but then more importantly, how to go and use the funnel kit plugin with Bricks Builder to build a sales funnel to make your store more money and sell more of your products or your clients' products if you're an agency doing this for clients. So here in the dashboard, if we go down to funnel kit and then to funnels, we can now create our first sales funnel. So I'll click add new funnel and up the top, you can see we can create three different types of sales funnels. So the first one is a store checkout. So this is where you'd send people to a checkout page. So it goes from the checkout form, as you can see with all of these designs. And if I just open up, say this one here with two steps, if we go preview, this funnel has the checkout page and then that goes to the second step, which is a thank you page. So that's a two step funnel. Whereas if we go down, this one here is a three step funnel. As you can see down the corner, I'll go preview. So this is the first step, which is the checkout page. So you can see that looks quite nice and neat. And then the one click upsell, which looks like this. And then they would go to the thank you page, which looks like this. So I'll just exit out of that. So that is a store checkout type of sales funnel. Now, if we go to specifically a sales funnel, so if I click on this, you'll notice the difference is that the sales funnel area has the store checkouts, but then also the funnels that lead in or the first step in the funnel is a sales page. So I'll click on sales funnel and you can see again, we have those ones that start with the checkout form, but now we have these ones here that lead with the sales page and they have more than two or three steps. You can see they normally have four steps now and one of them is going to be that sales page design. So let's just have a look and I'll preview this one here. This would be the sales page and then it goes the checkout page, the one click up sells and then the thank you page. So this is what the sales page looks like. So I'll just show you the design here. I'll just scroll to the bottom quickly, but just so you get an idea of the content on this page. And then that would click through to step two, which would be the checkout page, which looks like this, which is nice and neat. And then that would click through once they complete that form to this step here for the upsells. So one click upsells, so that looks like this. And then that would go to the thank you page, which looks like this. And worth mentioning now is that even though there's four steps in this funnel where it goes the checkout page, then an upsell, and then the thank you page, you can have more than one upsell and downsell here, and they can actually have different designs. So while this has four steps in this funnel, just know that you can actually go and create more upsells and downsells than it is showing here. But I'll, we'll get to that later on in today's video. But that would be one funnel that we could design today. So I'll get out of that. I'll show you some other ones, and then we'll choose one for today's tutorial. I am for today's video trying to stick to the four steps in the funnel that we can design today, just so you can see how you would design every step in the funnel, the sales page, checkout page, the upsells, and the thank you page. It'll just give you the best overview of how you'd go and do this using Bricks Builder. Let's go and have a look at this one here. So for the pets, that. So this is looking pretty good, pretty easy to go and create it using Bricks Builder. So this could be a good choice. That would go to the checkout page, which looks like that. And then we'll go down to the one click upsell design, which looks like this. And then the thank you page, which looks like this. And let's look at one more design, which could be this one here. So a makeup brand, I think it is. So this would be the sales page where you send your email list or your pay traffic or just any eyeballs, you'd, you'd send them to this URL here and they could read about your offer. Then that would click through to the checkout page, which looks like this. Again, nice and neat. And then that would go to the upsell design that looks like this one. This looks really good. So my upsell pages that I've used in the past mimic more of this style where you have a nice strong headline and then it says the offer and the benefits of getting that in terms of how much money they're saving, who it's for and so on. A big picture of the product and then a big button that just stands out, has a lot of space around it. And then it goes down to some social proof and some testimonials, maybe a little bit more about the product. But I do like to keep my upsell pages quite simple and pretty much this layout. 
headline, a lead in sentence, big image, and then a big button. So I'm liking this one so far out of the ones we've looked at. And then the checkout page looks like this. So uh, going down, that looks like it's pretty good, pretty doable. I think for today, let's go ahead and recreate this design in Bricks Builder using the Funnel Kit plugin. And just as a side note, before we jump in and start building the sales page using Bricks Builder, if we exit out of this and go up, if you aren't using Bricks Builder, you've just clicked on this more out of curiosity, but you're using another page builder like Elementor, Divi, Gutenberg, Oxygen, then they're all ready to go. So for example, everyone has Gutenberg. So if you are using Gutenberg these days, you could go Gutenberg here, you could scroll down, there it is there, you would preview that. Then you go import this funnel. Now the funnel kits team have their own Gutenberg blocks plugin that this actual sales funnel builder relies on to build its content. So you just go activate and then we can give this funnel a name. So I'm going to say demo and this is going to be Gutenberg and then I'll go add and there's that funnel all ready to go on Gutenberg. So if we open this up, this is the sales page. And then if you wanted to edit that, you would just go up to edit sales page. And now you're in here editing using Gutenberg. So everything that you're used to. And that's the same with the checkout. If you had a look at this, it'd be Gutenberg. Everything here would be Gutenberg. If we go back to funnels and we go add new funnel and we could go to Elementor, we could go to sales funnels, go down. There it is there as well. We'll go preview and then we'll go import this funnel. We'd need to install Elementor and it would be the same process. If you're using Beaver Builder, which is the page builder I used before Bricks Builder, you would do exactly how I'm about to show you to do it with Bricks Builder. But if you are using Beaver Builder, I would strongly recommend checking out Bricks Builder, especially before the price increase. So with all that said, let's jump in and start building the sales funnel using Bricks Builder and Funnel Kit. So the first step in this is going to be designing the first step in our sales funnel, which is going to be the sales page. So this is that sales page. So this is the design just to rejog your memory in case you've skipped ahead to this section and you didn't look at the previous one. Now these images, because this is the funnel kit template, right? If I right click and inspect element here, the images are hosted on CloudFront. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to open up all the images here in the funnel kit template, and I'm just going to save them to my computer. Then we'll upload them into the media library. And then once we have all the assets in there for the sales page, we'll jump into Bricks Builder and get creating this page. So I'm going to go save image here, and then I'm just going to save that there. And I'll just save this logo as well. So I'll save that and going down. And then here, this is an image. So I'll save this. And then I think that's a background. So I'll just go in there like that and I'll save that. So I'm just going to pause the video now and just do that for all the other assets that are on this page. Okay, so that's all done. So I'll go to the admin area and I'm going to go ahead and import those images into the media library. But before we do that, I'm going to install a plugin that's going to make this a whole lot easier for us to do this tutorial. So I'm going to go down to plugins and then add new and then upload plugin. And there's this plugin here, which is called folders, unlimited folders to organize your media library. If you go down, it is a really good plugin. You can see 987 five star ratings. Now I've gone ahead and purchased the pro version. So I'm going to go to the premium website and just download the pro version to my computer. So that's done. And now I'm just going to upload the pro version here and go install now and activate plugin. And now that we've installed that, I'm going to go to the media library and I'm going to create a new folder and I'll just call this sales page and we'll go submit. So now I'll click into the sales page folder and now I can just drag them from my computer or I can go select files. So I'll just select them all here and I'll go open. And now they're all going to import. And now all those images are uploaded in there. The benefit of doing that is if we go to pages and add new, and then I just do a test page here and we edit with bricks. And then if we go to add an image element, so we'll click in and click there and then go select image. In our media library, I can design the page and go, okay, sales page. And then I'm only seeing the images for that sales page. So that's why I've done it just to keep this tutorial nice and easy to follow. So that's the folders plugin. If you reckon that might benefit you and you're interested in giving it a go, there is a free version and I will leave my link below to go to their website in case you want to learn more about it and look at purchasing the pro version if it's right for you. So with that out the way, we're ready to design the sales page. So let's go ahead and go to funnel kit and then funnels and then I'll create a new funnel. So I'll go add new funnel and then we're going to do a sales funnel. And because Bricks Builder isn't here, we're going to select other and then we're going to start from scratch and then I'll give us the name. So sales funnel 
bricks and go add. And now we're ready to start adding steps into our funnel. So I'm gonna go add a new step and we're gonna do a sales page and we're gonna select other and then we're gonna start from scratch. I'll call this sales page bricks and we'll go add. And now we have that step there. So to add the next step in our sales funnel, which would be the checkout page, we'd go add new step and then we go checkout page and do that. But the way that I'm gonna structure today's video is I'm gonna add the step, we'll design that step through to completion. And then in the next section of the video, we'll add the next step and then we'll design just that step. So each step in the funnel, we will design before we move on to adding the next step. So based on that, we're gonna go in and start designing our sales page. So I'm gonna click into the sales page step and then click edit template. And you'll notice that we don't have the option to edit this with Bricks Builder. So if we go back to our admin area and go up to Bricks and then to settings, under general and post types, we just need to add that post type. So for this tutorial, we're gonna do sales pages, which is now, I'm gonna do the others here as well. So we're gonna do the checkout post type and we're gonna do the offers, which is the upsells and downsells. And we will do the thank yous. Me personally, I'm just gonna go ahead. And if this was my real website, I would select everything to do with WooFunnels here because I'm probably gonna build them using Bricks Builder. So I'll do that uh, and the landing pages as well. So with that, we'll go down and we'll click save settings. Now that's done. So if I come back to the sales page and reload, we can now edit with Bricks. So I'll click edit with Bricks. And now we're in the interface that you guys are all familiar with. So let's get to creating this design. So looking at it, we have a section up here for the logo and then we'll do the hero. So starting with the top area, we'll go add the section with the container in there. And then in here, I'm just gonna add an image element inside. So I'll go there and then we'll just go to the content and select the image and we'll choose our logo and I'll go insert. And then we'll go to style and we'll just scale it down. So down here, the width, we can try 200. So that looks a bit big. We could try uh, 150. That's looking a bit better. We could obviously just right click inspect element and see that it's 120 pixels. So I'll go back and do 120 pixels. But for this video, I wanna show you more about just how we go and do it. I don't wanna be pixel perfect and go and make everything exactly like the design. I think if we can get 90 or 80% of the way there, but have this video be faster, you'll get the idea of how you can go and build sales funnels with Bricks Builder, which is the most important takeaway from this video. And then also you get an idea of how funnel kit works if you've never seen it before. So let's aim for that 80 or 90% accuracy and see how we go. So on the section, we'll add some padding. So maybe like 20 top and bottom. And let's leave that for now. So now let's go ahead and design the hero. So coming back into here, let's go ahead and add a section to there, which is a section and container, which pulls it in. And then we'll add this. So I will see what font this is. Shamonman. Shamonman. So coming back to here, we'll go up here and we'll add a heading into there. Now, if this was our actual website where we've designed it using Bricks Builder, then we've probably already, when we're designing like a homepage, about us page, contact page, we've probably already gone into settings and then theme styles. And we probably created our global styles with our heading font and all that sort of stuff. As you guys have seen, this is a demo website. So there's nothing set up right now. But what I will do just as best practice here, I will define some global styles and then we'll use that throughout our design. It's just gonna make this a lot faster. So here I'm gonna go and create a new global style. And I'll go grant global style. And then we'll go down to typography. So now H1, H2, H3. I'm gonna guess that looking at this design, maybe this is like a like a meta style. Like it's not a normal H1, 2, 3, or 4 font face. So if we go down, probably in the global styles, we'll just set whatever this one is. So we'll go down here. It is Cardo. So we'll go back and we'll go all headings and we'll go font family is Cardo, which is this one here. So Cardo 700 and it was 700 over here as well. So we will come back to the global settings and change them as we go and do more in the design. But for now, we've set the font face. So let's just leave that for now and go back to the design. So coming back to the section, we'll go under style and then we'll go down to background and we'll go select image and we'll just select that background image here and we'll go insert. And now let's add all the other texts. So discover the magic, I'll just copy that, go to content and I'll just paste that in there. And then let's just duplicate that and I'll copy that as well. And then I'll go down here and paste that in there. And then we'll copy this. So that's gonna be text. So we'll go basic text there, that, and we'll paste that in. And then we have a button. So I'll go up here, we'll do a button and we'll put that in there. 
This is all centered. So to do that, we'll go back here and we'll click on this container. And then of course this is display flex. We can just go down here and align the children or the items inside its center like that. If we go in to our settings and then theme styles and then under here in the section element, we can add the default padding. So coming back to here, if I just measure this, I just use my screenshot just to be fast. So that's 110 pixels. So coming back here, we'll do 110 top and then 110 bottom. And now every time we add a section into our page, it gets that by default because that is under our theme styles, the global styles that apply everywhere. So let's go ahead and set our button colors. So I'll just right click and inspect element and we'll get it from here. So there it is there, so I'll copy. And then I'm gonna set this again because if this is my branding color, it's probably gonna be throughout my normal website and my global styles. So settings, theme styles, and then I'll go down, clap that and we'll look for buttons. So there it is. And this is going to be for my primary. So uh, the background color, I'll click and then I'll go down and we will just set it. So paste it there like that. And then it's going to have a white color. So we'll go to typography and we'll set the color to be white like that. And then the text transform, we're going to do it uppercase. So it matches here and it looks like it's bold as well. So here we're going to go down to font weight and we'll make it 700. And if we toggle between the two, that's looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and add some spacing above this button. So it's going to look similar to that. Let's add say 50. That looks pretty good. And then we'll click on here and then we'll say maybe, uh, what's that? Yeah, maybe 20. And now let's go ahead and style this font here for the heading. So I'll right click and go inspect element and we'll have a look. So that's the name Charmonmon. So I'll copy that and then we'll go to the heading and then we'll go down to style typography and then we'll go down to here. So it says Cardo. So that's getting it from the global styles, but we can override it just for this element by putting it in here and searching for it and clicking. So now that's updated. So we could do it this way. My only concern is maybe this font is also used on the, uh, the other steps in the funnel. So the checkout form, the upsells and the thank you page. So instead of hard coding it locally, I might go ahead and create a class for this. So I'll actually get rid of that locally. And then up here, I'm going to click into here and I'll create a new CSS class. And here I'll say something like secondary font like that. Now I'm no expert in how to come up with naming conventions for your CSS class names. I'm still wanting to learn a lot more about that. I'm more of an ad hoc sort of get things up and get traffic to them and try and make, you know, money in sales and build an email list. So I definitely want to refine this process. But for now, let's just run with secondary font. So with that set, we'll do that for the font face, but we'll get out of that. And then let's create a new class here and we'll do secondary color. And that can be our pink color. So back here, if we um, have a look at this heading, this pink color for the secondary color global CSS class, Let's go down and for the color over here, we'll set that color there. So now that's done. So that's our hero section for now. What I like to do personally when I'm building websites is sort of get all the content into the page and then adjust the global classes and see how the whole page reacts and do this do the styling that way. So that's what we're gonna do. So we'll leave that there for now and we'll go down to doing this section. So back here, I'm just gonna collapse that section and then let's add a new section. So I'll go up here and we'll go to section. And we should also name these. So I'll name that header. This is going to be the hero. And then this one, if we go back, let's call this ingredients. So looking at this, this is two columns. That's a background on the column and then that's an image. So coming back into here inside of our container, let's go up and we'll add a block and then another block. And this will be left and that could be right. And then in here we have the image. So I'll go up and add an image. So there and we'll go add. And then in here, I'm just gonna select that image under content and then select image. And it's this one here and we'll go insert. So that's there. And then in the left column, we'll add this heading. So up here, we'll say heading and I'll just paste that in there. And then we'll add this text, which would be text. So I'll click on that. And then in here, we'll paste that text there. So coming back to the container, let's just lay out the items next to each other. And you can see that this one is a little bit larger than over here. So we'll go and resize these to the left. If we go to style and then layout, let's make its width. 70% maybe, and then this one could be 30%. Maybe that's a bit too big. Let's do 35% and then back here, 65%. So let's add this background now. So here on the left, we'll go to collapse that. We'll go to background and then select image. And then it's gonna be this one here and we'll go insert. And then here, we're gonna position it to the bottom right like that. And the background size, we're gonna change to auto and then no repeat. And then if we go 
go back to this container, let's just go back to the content. And because this is set to display flex, a flex box, we can go down here and just stretch the content. So now this is at the bottom. So let's add this gap here. So again, cause this is a container that's flex box, we can go to the column gap and we can do say like 20 pixels, which looks pretty good. And then let's add this border up here. So I'm not sure how they've done that here. Uh, it looks like it's just a divider. So we'll go back and then in here, let's go up here and we'll do divider. So there it is, so I'll click and then we'll move that up the top, so that's there. And then for the width, uh, we could just make it whatever this is. So this is like 185. So let's just go say 180 and then we just need to bring this down. So on the left here, we'll go to style and then let's add a margin of like 180 or whatever this is, so 110. So 110 like that. Now let's go ahead and add this spacing around the elements. Now, if you're familiar with a CSS framework like Tailwind or, or something like that, you probably already know how to do this. I'm just starting to learn about CSS frameworks and really understand how they work and jump in and do that. And as I learn there, I'm gonna make YouTube videos on what I learned to not only help me learn it, but you know, share what I learned along the way. But for right now, I don't really have access to a CSS framework or know how they work. So the way that I set spacing is by doing a global CSS class. So let's go ahead and do that. So up here in heading, we'll go up here and we'll add spacing. So I'll say like margin top and let's say medium. And then the top might be 20, maybe a little bit larger, 25. And then let's go ahead and get out of that and we'll create another class. So go up here and we'll go margin top and we'll go large. And then let's just double that for 50 like that. Cool. So now that they're set up, let's get out of them and cancel. And then for this heading, I'm going to set it to have the margin top medium. And then for the paragraph, if we come back here, it has more spacing here. I'm going to set this to have the class margin top large. I think that might be a little too big. So let's go back in and edit that. And let's say like 40, which looks a bit better. And then we'll go back in here and the medium will say 20. Let's stick with them for now. So let's get out of that there. So now let's go in and add some padding over here. So let's just say like 150, 250, 300, say 320, maybe like that, just so it's overlapping a little bit. And now what we have here is starting to look like this. Now, if I click on this, this is set to a H3. I might actually make this a H2. So I'll go like that. Because looking at this design, there's no other headings that would be higher than that. That would be the H2. And now let's go ahead and style the font size. So this is set, if we have a look, at 50 pixels. So let's go back and we'll go to our global theme settings and then theme styles. And then we'll go down to typography and then H2. We'll click here and we'll go to say 50, which looks like that. We need to change the line height. We might actually do that on all the headings. We'll go up to here and then the line height, which is here, we'll do the 1.2, uh, which is similar to here. I might actually make that like a little bit smaller. I feel like it's a little bit too loose, but that's looking a lot better there. And you can see this now is definitely coming together. Now you will notice there's some spacing down the bottom here. So to finish that off and get a little bit closer, I'll go into this text element here and then under the style tab and layout. Let's add some padding at the bottom and we'll do like uh, 100. See if that's looking pretty good. That actually looks quite good. Maybe a little bit more, 150, maybe 120. That's looking quite good. And now because this image has been pulled down here, this space has been added. So this is actually a lot larger than it was before. So I'll click back onto here and then I'm just gonna reduce this. So by maybe like 50 or 60, maybe something like that, which this looks like it's in line with that. So that's looking pretty good. So there are sections done there. This hasn't scaled up because if we click on this, this was, if we go to content, a H3. So we'll make this a H2 again. And now that's taken on that same size. Uh, this is actually black. So we'll go back to our settings, theme styles, typography, and then all headings. Let's just make this a black color. So we'll just make it a full black. So zero, zero like that. And that looks a lot better. So this section now is looking very similar to that. So what we can do is go up and just finish off this area here. So looking at it, let's just make this a bit bigger and pull this in here and make this a gray. So we'll come back here. So this is going to be bold. So we'll go back to content and then collapse that and go to typography. And this is going to be 700 like that. And we'll just change the color to a gray color. So now let's make this a little bit larger. So I'm going to edit the global secondary font class again. And then the font size, let's just make this like 40 pixels or we can actually have a look at what this is. So 50. So we'll come back and make that 50. And let's just collapse all of these and then just focus on the heroes. And then here, if we go back, we can just break this at skin and then care. So like 
like that. So now that's broken. And then we might make this a little bit larger. So here I'll go style and then we'll get rid of that and we'll go down to typography and we'll make the font size and we can try 22. And I need to set the body copy. So if we go back, let's actually have a look at what this is. So we'll go inspect and go down and having a look, it's Josephine Sands. So we'll copy and then back here, we'll go to settings, theme styles, typography, and then we'll go body. And then we'll set the font family here and we'll search for Josephine Sands, click. And I'm gonna make this the 16 to match our reference website. Now I did notice with this reference site that the heading extends a little bit more over this way than the body copy. And how having a look at it, we need to adjust this. So, so here on the left, if we go back to what we did, we had 320 padding right over here, as you can see. Let's actually reduce that to like 300. So this can come out. And then we're gonna go down to just the text here and we'll add some extra padding over here just for this, so maybe like 50. So now we get that same effect that matches over here. Now coming back up to this section up here, I think that's a bit too bold. We'll go back to that as well. And we might just reduce that a little bit. And then with this, let's just bring that in with a max width. So here under the style tab, we'll go down to layout. And then for the max width here, let's try 50%. So looking at our reference, it's a little bit wider. I actually prefer that. So I'm gonna leave that like that for now. And then coming down, we'll go back into the typography and we'll just make the line height a little bit tighter. So say 1.2. Now here on the reference side, if we pull this in, the background is in the center. Whereas if we go to ours and pull that in, it is at the top. So let's adjust that. So we'll go back to the builder and then I'll go to the hero and then we'll go to style background. And then up here, we're going to do center center like that. I might go and add one more class up here and this is gonna be called uh, margin top small. We might make this 10 like that. So I'll just get out of that. And then we'll just apply that to this just to push it down a little bit. So I think the sections that we've done so far are looking good. They match the reference design that we're recreating and we're only doing the designs for the desktop at this point in time. So we're not gonna touch the tablet or the mobile just yet. We will come back to that a little bit later on. So let's continue with doing the desktop and go to the next section. So coming back to the reference design, we'll go down and it's gonna be this one here, recommended for you. Now breaking apart what I'm seeing on my screen here, we have have a heading, we have some basic text here, we have three columns with an image, some stars there, we have the headline, we have our pricing and we have a button, so that would be a card. And then down a bit, we have this heading, some text, we have three more columns with some images and then this area and then we go into the next section. So we'll just do whatever's in the white for now because that will be just the one section. Now this is a little bit more complex than meets the eye and it's going to have to do with this pink background here because if you have a look, the pink background goes down and it's halfway here through these cards. Now, one way that you could go ahead and achieve this pink background is to go and make it a background image and then set the background image on this entire container where the image is just this pink bit here. That would be a square and it would just repeat across the X axis. That'd be one way to do it. But looking at this template, I just went through the code. They've set it up a different way and I want to show you how to do that. So let's get into designing this section for now. And once we've laid out all the content like this, we'll go ahead and add this pink background right at the end of this section. So firstly, let's add the heading and the text and then these three columns. So back here, I'm gonna go up here and then we're gonna add a section and I'll add that in. So we have a section and a container down here. Let's rename this. So recommended for you. So here I'll just say recommended for you. And then in here, we'll go ahead and we'll add the heading. So add that in and we'll add the basic text. And then we'll go to the heading and we just need to set the this to be a H2, just to match these ones up here. And coming back to our reference, all the text is centered here. So I'll come back here and then on this container here, I'll just align everything center. And I'll just copy the text from here and I'll paste that there. And I'll just copy the text from here as well. And we'll paste that there. And then let's go ahead and add all the other content and then we'll get into the nitty gritty styling. So we need a divider here. We'll do the three columns with an image up the top and the stars and the heading, some text, and then the button. So we'll go ahead and then in this container, we'll add the divider or I'm actually gonna get it and clone it from up here. So this divider here, I'll just go and I'll go copy. And then here I'll go paste. And now it's added down there. And if we click 
click on that, we can just center it. So now it's in the center. And then in this section, I'm going to add another container like that. And we'll just name this the three cards. And then in here, let's add a block. So we'll add that there. And this can be card one. And then into this, we'll add the image. So I'll add that. And then I'll just choose an image here. So I'll go select image. And it's this one here. And I'll go insert. So there it is. And just coming back here, you'll notice the image goes the full width of the card. And then in here, there's padding around it. So we're actually going to put these in their own separate uh, block. So we'll come back here. And then I'll go up here and I'll add a block. And we'll add that in. And let's just call this card bottom. And then the card bottom, let's go ahead and we're going to add the icons and we're going to search for this one here. So icon and we'll go down and we're going to have five of these that need to sit next to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to preempt this and I'm going to wrap this in another block. So I'll go wrap block. So now we'll add five stars in here and sit them next to each other. Before I do that, before I clone them, let's style them. So we'll go up to here and we'll make them the gold color and I'll just change the icon and we need to go out of there. We'll go to solid and we'll search for star and there it is there. And we'll make that a a little bit smaller. So, uh, so say 25, looking at the reference, that looks pretty good. And now that that's styled, we can just control C and then V and do that until there's five of them. And then we just need to sit them next to each other. So we'll just click on block. And then because this is display flex, we can come down to here and go horizontal. So we click that and now they're sat next to each other. So let's collapse this. And, but now under the block for the stars, we can actually rename this and go stars. Then in the card bottom, let's go ahead and we'll add another heading. So we'll add that in there. And I'll just copy the text from here and we'll put that there. And then for this, we'll probably make this a H4. That would make sense, I think. And then the two prices. So I'll just copy that. There's a couple of different ways that we could do that as well. I think the way that I'm going to do it is to go up here and make that basic text. So we'll add that in. And then I'll paste one of the prices there. And then I'll just call this price normal. And I'll go ahead and duplicate that. And I'll call this sale. So the current price. And then I'll actually wrap this in a block. And then I'll drag that one in there. And just like before, I'll click on the block and I'll sit everything in there next to each other. And then we'll also center them while we're here. And then also I'll go to the whole card bottom and we'll just center everything in there as well. And then the stars as well, we will center. So let's go ahead and then back in the card bottom, we'll add a button. So I'll go button and we'll add that in there. And remember that gets the styling that we set under our global theme options. So that's just come like that out of the box. And we'll just change this text to add to cart. And then here I can see these have rounded corners, but up here the buttons don't. I like to keep things consistent and I prefer to have my buttons have a rounded corner. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to go back into my global theme styles and then editing this one, go down to my buttons and then down for the primary, I'll go to border and I'm going to go down and set five pixels all the way around like that. Again, personal preference, it's really up to you, but I will do that for this. So it's starting to come together. We'll just get this looking a little bit more like the reference before we go and clone it to make the other two cards. So we need to add some spacing. So this is what the spacing looks like. It's quite generous. So coming back, I'll click on the button and then I'll go up to our classes and I might try the margin top medium. So I think that's pretty good. And then the pricing, I'll just rename this to pricing. And then let's go up here and apply the margin top small. And then on the heading here, let's go and apply the margin top medium. And then let's go ahead and finish the styling for the pricing. So this here, the sale price is pink and it's also a little bit larger. And then this one has a strike through and we also need to add the spacing between them. So coming back to here, we'll go into pricing and the price normal, I'll click on it and then we'll go to style and we'll go down and and then under typography, text decoration, we can just add that there. So now it has a strike through. And then if we click back onto the parent, we can go to style typography and font weight, we can make it bold. Now we'll go to the sale price and I'm a little bit pedantic. I'll make this $40 just so it makes sense. But more importantly, if we click on the sale price again, we can go into the style and then the font size, I'll make it 1.2. So it's a little bit bigger. And then we can go and assign it our secondary color global class. So now that's the pink. Now I'll just exit out of that. And now we just need to add the spacing. And to do that, if we go back here, because this is display flex, then these items inside there are sort of acting like columns. So we can come down and use column gap and we could say 
say 10. So now let's click back onto the card and we'll just center the last things in there, which is just the image to go. And now we're ready to clone this. So I'm going to collapse that and I'm just going to go Command C and then click back on the parent and go Command V, Command V. So now there's three cards here like that. And I'll just rename them. So this is going to be card two and this is going to be card three. And now we just need to sit them side by side. So we'll click back here and then because it's display flex, we can make them go horizontal. And and then we can set the gap for the columns to be say 20 pixels. It's a bit hard to see because we need to add that drop shadow. So let's add that next, which looks like this. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to click on the card and then I'll click here to add a class and I'll just call this something like drop shadow medium. And then we can go down to style, collapse that and then go down to border and box shadow. And then the box shadow, we'll just say zero, zero, try 15, zero. And we'll make this a say light gray color color like that and maybe just a little bit lighter and maybe we'll just make this go out a little bit further just so it's more of a gradient. So now we just need to go and apply that class to the other two cards. So if I click on card two, we'll go up to here and then we'll find that drop shadow medium class, apply it. Now that's applied, go to card three, we'll go up and we'll apply that there. Now coming back, the columns are a bit wider. We can have a look. So they're about 30 pixels wide. And we also need to add some spacing down here as well, some padding. So coming back here, I'll go back into there, content, and we'll make this 30. So now let's go ahead and space out the card bottom. So I'm gonna click on this inside card one, and I'm gonna use a class here. So I'll go up to here and create a new class. I'll call this padding medium, and this will be all the way around. And then we'll go to style. And then under here, uh, let's lock these and and just say 25 pixels. And I'm pretty happy with that. So let's go ahead and apply that to the other cards. So let's go to card two, then card bottom, and we'll apply the padding medium. And we'll go over to here as well. So inside card three, we'll go down and card bottom, and we will apply the padding medium there. Now, coming back to the reference website, that's more how they like it. Me personally, I'd probably add more spacing here. So to do that, we could do that by clicking on the button and just do it locally. Um, but to stick with this idea of of utility classes, we could just create a margin bottom class. So we could just click on the button and then we'll go up to here and we'll create a new class. And then here the margin top medium, because I might not know what the pixel value is for that, what we could do is go copy styles and then up here go margin bottom medium and then create that class. And if we then click back into this class, so margin bottom medium, we can go margin bottom medium. We can go over to paste styles and we'll paste that there. And now we can see the margin top medium was 20. So now we can just cut and paste that down the bottom. And now we know the margin top medium is the same as the margin bottom medium class. So with the extra padding there, I'm going to go and click on this button here and then apply that class as well. So the margin bottom medium and then here as well, we'll go margin bottom medium. So now let's go up to our three cards and we'll just apply our say margin top large class up here just to give it some spacing. And then we'll go to the divider and we'll say uh, margin top medium. And then for our text here, we'll do margin top medium as well. Now looking at this lead in text here, this is similar to this text up here, but this is just a little bit larger in terms of font size it looks like. So let's go back to our design and up here, I'm just gonna click into this and go down and look at the typography settings. So go down here, so 600, 1.2 and in here, this color. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and make that a class. So I'll remove the settings from this local element. So I'll get rid of the color, the font font size, the font weight and the line height. So now that's reset back to default. So let's go down and we'll create a global class. So I'm gonna click on this and then we'll exit out of editing that one. And then we'll click in and I'll just call this lead in text and go enter. And then we'll make it this gray color. And then for the font size, we'll do, it's really weird because I never use pixels for font sizes, but I think because the reference site for this video today was using pixels, I just randomly did it as well. So we will continue using pixels here, um, but I usually use like M or Rem. So it's just funny that I'm using pixels right now. So here, let's just do 20 pixels. And then for the line height, we'll set it to 
two. And then for the font weight, we'll make that 600. And then here, I'm gonna set this text align to center. I know it's probably not ideal to do that in this class here. Maybe we could go and create a second class for centering text called text center or something like that. I'm just gonna do this for now because if I go back and look at this reference website, most of the time we use this, it is centered. So I will set that there. So now that that's done, let's exit out of editing this class. Okay, because we finished that. So now the last thing that I will set here is under layout. Let's set a max width to be 50% or say 70% and press enter. So now that we've done that there, let's go back up to the top and click into here and then we will apply that class. So lead in text, I'll click, that's applied. And this text was just a little bit bigger. So I think we had this at 22 pixels like that. So now that's updated going down, that's updated. This is all looking good. So coming back to the reference website, let's go down and do this area here. So I'll collapse the recommended for you section and then we'll go and add a new one. And then here I'll just say leaves skin and then we just need to set this up heading text and the divider. And it looks like it is a standard format of the heading, the lead in and the divider. So we could actually put that in its own container that we could just keep cloning. So if we go back to recommended for you, it's this container here. So I could just call this lead in like that. And then I'll just go and collapse that. And then I'll just copy this. So I'll go copy and we'll get rid of this container here. So I'll delete and then we'll paste it into there. So command V and now that's down there. So I'm just gonna copy the text, paste it and we'll leave that text there there for now. And the only thing that we might need to do is just remove this spacing down here because coming back to here, that's a little bit closer. So I'm just going to click on the one above and we'll go to layout and then the padding at the bottom, we might try zero like so. And now let's go ahead and add these. So similar to what we did before with the cards in here, we're going to add another container like that. And this will be the three coals. And then in here, we'll add a block. So we'll add that in there. And then let's call this coal for column. And then in here, we'll add the image. So we'll go add image and then heading, we'll add that and then text. So basic text, and now that's added in there. So we'll go to the image and we'll go to content and select the image. And it's gonna be this girl here, insert. And you can see it comes with the circle. So that's actually part of the image. So I don't need to go and set that up, but let's go ahead and click up to here and then center everything inside it. And then we'll just add some spacing again, using our classes. So I'll go up to here and we'll make this a medium. And then this could be a small. So we'll go up and go small like that. And I'll just just copy the text from here and fill it out a little bit more like that. And we will go in and just center that text. So I'll go into here and then style and we'll just close that typography and we'll center align that. So now that that's done, let's collapse this column. So there it is. And we're just gonna duplicate this. So we could right click and go to duplicate and then right click and go duplicate. And then we'll go up to here and we'll sit them next to each other. So back to content and we'll go to horizontal and we'll add some spacing up the top. So we will apply our large margin top class. And then we're going to add some columns. I'll just keep it the same up here, which was the 30 pixels column gap like that. So comparing this now to the reference website, we just need to change these images. So I'll go back and I'll go to the second columns image and we'll delete and then select image. And it's this girl here, insert. And then we'll go to this last column and we'll delete and we'll select. And it will be this one here and insert. And just to be pedantic, we're gonna copy the text from here and then paste it into our design. So there, there, and there. And these headings are a little bit big. So if we click on this, we probably wanna make these a H4. So clicking and making a H4. And also this one, we will make it a H4. And I might actually edit this again and get rid of the medium class. And I'm gonna make this have the large just to space it out. So I'll go back here, remove that, and we'll add the large here. And back here, I'm gonna remove the medium and we'll go up here and add the large. So now let's review this to this. And I think that's pretty good. Again, we're looking for 80%. I think we've hit it there for this one here. And now coming down, let's do this section here. So if I right click and inspect element here just to get the column width. So we'll go up. This is 52%. So this is gonna be 48. This is an image, very basic layout. If we go up, it's quite similar to what we had up here. So I might clone this section and then we'll just adjust it. So let's go down and then we'll go back to our design and I'm going to collapse all of this because it's getting quite long. And then it was the ingredient section. So I'll go right click and I'll go duplicate and then I'll drag that to the bottom and then we'll go down. So here it is. And I'll just rename this to discover the magic. And then let's go back and I'll just copy the text from here and I'll paste it into here. 
and then I'll get the text from here and we can paste that into there. So there we are. So let's go ahead and just quickly expand this and we'll just see what's happening in there. And then let's edit this image. So I'll click here, we'll go content and then we'll delete and click select image. And there it is there. And then we'll go insert. And then there's no padding on this section anymore. So if we go to discover the magic and go style, you can see we overwrote the theme styles locally. So I'll just get rid of that. So now we have some spacing down the bottom. And then I'll go back into the left here and we'll go under the background and we'll just remove that. So I'll just exit that. Uh, you can also click up here as well. And then we'll go to layout because we can see there's a yellow dot. So something's applied here and we have padding to the right. So I'll just go ahead and remove that. And then we can also remove the margin up the top. And then at the end of this left column, we need to add a button element. So we'll add that in. And the button says explore now. And there's a smaller gap there. So I'll just go into the button, explore now. And then the basic text, we can see there's a yellow dot here under style and layout. And that's because there's padding at the bottom. Let's remove that for now. And then let's click into the button and then we'll apply one of our global classes. So we might try margin top large and then we'll just adjust the width. So the left, if we go back here, so that was 52% and then the right was going to be 48%. And then you can see that this image doesn't actually fill the column. So if we go back to our reference here and I right click and go inspect element, we can see that this image is this width here, but it's actually smaller than the column. So this column must have a background color that matches the background of the image. So if we go up a little bit to here, we can see the background color is set. So I'll copy that from there and then we'll go back. And then on this right column here, we will go under background and then the background color, we will paste that down here. So now that's all set up. And then we'll go back to content and we will just align the content in the middle. So the image is in the middle of that column. And the last thing we need to do is change this button color. So if we go back to the reference design there's all green buttons throughout this website, except there's a pink button. And if we go down, that's the only other button. So for this branding, let's assume that for the brand identity, the green button color is the main button color. And then this pink button color is the secondary or alternative. So let's go ahead and set that up. So I'm going to get the color of this. So right click and go inspect element. And then for the anchor, we'll get the background color from there. And then we'll go up to settings and then theme styles. And then we'll go down to buttons and I'll click on that and then we'll go down. So we set the primary, so let's set the secondary. So the secondary background color is going to be that color there. And then to apply the secondary style, we just click into this button here and then the style will select down here and go to secondary. So after doing that, you can see that we've lost some of the styling, the rounded corners, the font weight, bold, and the text transform uppercase. So let's go back to our settings, theme styles, and we'll go down to our button element and we'll go down to the secondary. And here we will select the uppercase text transform and the font weight's gonna be 700. And then the border will make this five all the way around. And now this better matches our green buttons up there. So now that that's done, if we compare this, to the reference site, that's pretty good. So I reckon we can go to the next section, which is this one here. So this one here, we'll go back and I'll just collapse that for now and we'll add a new section. So we'll go section and add that in there and I'll call this testimonial. And then let's go up and this heading here is quite similar. We just need the heading and the divider, not the lead in text. So I will go to leave skin and the lead in. I'll copy this and I'll paste this under the testimonial and we can just delete this container I just added before. So I'll go delete. So if we go down, now it's looking like that. So we'll go into this and the basic text will just delete. So I'll go delete and then we'll get the text from here paste that in there. And then I'll just collapse the lead in. I'll keep that in its own container just to make it make sense in, our, in my brain at least. And we'll add a new container. So I'll go container and we'll add that in and we'll call this testimonial content. And then in this container, we're going to add the image like that. So it's there. And then we'll add some basic text for the actual testimonial, which I'll go and copy the text from now and we'll paste that there. And I'll get this text from here as well. And that's going to be some more basic text. 
text. So we'll add that and then I'll click in here and just paste that text and then we'll get this as well. And that's going to be another basic text. So we'll add that in there. And then over here, we'll paste that text there. So let's go ahead and go up here and we're just going to center everything. So we'll come over to there and then I'll click on this one and we'll go style and we'll go to typography and center. Now let's go into the image and we'll go content and select image. And there it is there and I'll go insert. And then while we're here, let's go in and add one of our global classes, margin top large. And then here we'll add also the margin top large. And then here as well, we'll add the margin top large. And then lastly, this one here will add the margin top small. So coming back into here, let's get the background color from here. So there it is there. So I'll copy that. And then on our container up here, I'll go to style and then collapse that. And we'll go to background and set the background color there. And now we need to do the font. So coming back here, so we'll right click and go inspect element and we can see Cardo 25 500 italic. So I was just watching a video on Tailwind CSS and the way that they do their CSS using that CSS framework, I just, I want to try and do it for this quote. So let's see if we can do it. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, as we go through, I'll try and explain what I saw in the video that I just watched. So here on the quote, instead of going through and doing one class here, so we could go up to here and go pull quote and we could make that a class and then for this global class we'd go to style and we go to typography and then we'd go down and we'd set it to be and we set it to be cardo here and we would make this italic and we would make the font size larger say like 2.5 rems instead of putting all of this into the one class here tailwind has separate classes that apply different styles so let's undo this and i'll show you what i mean because this is sort of what i want to try and do for like my videos coming up on YouTube. Let's see how we go. So up here, let's go up here and then we'll do a new one. So we'll say like text italic and then we'll go down to typography and the font style will be italic. And then we'll exit out of that and then we'll add a new class and we could do something like font Cardo and then we could press enter. And then for this, we would set the font to be Cardo like that. So then see how we're stacking multiple classes on this one element here. So this one element has font cardo and text italic. So it breaks it out like that. So, and then coming back here, the font size is 25 pixels. So coming back, we'll create a new global class and we'll say text. And I'll assume that medium is the default. So we'll go one step up and we'll do large, so LG. And then this font size could be 2.5 rems. So that's a bit bigger there. And then we'll exit out of that. Now we need to change the line height. So I might go line height. And if that is the medium, we'll go small. And then down here in in lion height, which is here, we could do like, we'll do 1.4 like that. Now this is also a bit bolder. So let's create a new one and we'll do uh, font 500. And then down here in the font weight, we could do 500. And then we need to bring it in. So we'll go and add a new class. And this could be like max width. Or we could set that to something like 75%. And then we'll go layout and then max width, we'll do 75% like that. And then I'll exit out of editing that. So this is done. And now these classes are doing one particular thing which when applied give this element its overall look and feel. So that's what I've learned from doing Tailwind so far just watching it online. Tailwind have their own classes that you use because it's an it's a framework so I don't know if they use margin top large etc etc. Once I learn them I will adopt them and put them into my videos uh, but I'm excited to learn this. I feel like the missing link that I have now doing website designs is a CSS framework so if you're using Tailwind let me know in the comments below. I'd be really curious to know how many people are actually using that. But let's keep going and we're going to make this bold now. So it's also bold. And if we have a look at it, it's bold and larger. So 25 pixels and it's 700 and it's Cardo. So clicking on here, we will search for our Cardo class and apply that. So it gets that font and then the font weight needs to be 700. We don't have that just yet. We have font 500. So let's add a 700. So I'll get out of editing that and I'll do font 700 and create a new class. And then let's go down down to typography and then we'll go down to here and we'll set the font weight to 700 and now we'll make the font size 2.5 rem and then this we'll inspect and have a look and this is 20 pixels 500 so we'll come back here so I'll click on that we'll make this 2 rem the color uh, is going to be our pink color which is the secondary color now this might actually make more sense to, to edit this and rename this to pink so uh, again we're always learning so I'm going to edit that and call that font 
font pink like that. And I've realized that I've just swapped to using rem instead of pixels that I was using at the start of today's video. So I have a blog post that I've wrote over the years and added to, and I'm going to link it in the description below. It goes through responsive font sizes and which ones that you should be using. I think I used pixels at the start of today's video because the reference website used pixels. So I just did it without thinking. But where I am in the video today, I wouldn't use pixels normally. I would use rem. So I'm going to go back to our design, which is here, and I'm going to quickly update all the font settings to be rems. So I'll go back to our global theme settings. So settings and then theme styles, and we'll go down to typography and I'll scroll up just to show you as we make changes here. So firstly, the base typography size, so the main font size for our document is 62.5%. The reason it is that is because browsers by default will set the font size to be 16 pixels and 62.5% of 16 pixels is 10 pixels. So what this is doing here is it's setting everything to be based on 10 pixels, which is easier for our mass. So if I go down and I say, I need my H2 to be 50 pixels, I can come into here and I can say five rem, which is five times 10 pixels, which is 50 pixels. So that's what I would normally do. And I think, is there anywhere else on here that I've made pixel changes? I think maybe here, uh, no, not there. Maybe the lead in text, I set the font size to 22. So I would set this to something like 2.2 rem. So 2.2 times 10 pixels, 22. And anywhere else that I've set it, I don't think anywhere else throughout this document, I set a font size that was in pixels. So it's just a small change there, but it really does make a difference. So if you're using pixels for font sizes, I would definitely recommend going into the description under my video and reading my blog post here. I also explain some of the themes that are out there for WordPress, how they set their fonts. I break it down, show you why they've done that, and then reverse engineer to help you make sense of just what's going on inside the page and the themes that you're using. But with this done, we're ready to finish these bottom sections. So I'm just going to get the color from here. So we'll go there and it's this. So I'll just copy this to clipboard. And then back here, I'm going to collapse everything. And then here, I'm going to add a section like that. And then I'll expand that. And then in this container, I'm going to add a block. And this is going to be our first column. And then in there, I'm going to add another block and then another block like that. And we'll just say this is left and this is right. So in the left, we're going to have the image of the icon. So I'll add that in there. And then in the right, we're going to have a heading and we're going to have basic text. And I'll just expand these. Now back on the section, we have that background copied to our clipboard. So I'm just going to go here under background. I'm going to go here and just paste that code. And then adopting this idea of a CSS framework, let's keep going with that. And let's go up here and create a new one. So, so this will be font white. And then for this one, we'll make the typography color white like that. And that's applied that font white class to the section. You can see the heading doesn't get that. So we just need to go down to that heading. So here, and we will apply that font white class there. So I'll go and do that there. So back in here, let's select our first image. So I'll go content and then select image. And then it's the rocket and I'll go insert. And then I'll go back here and we want to go display flex and we'll position them next to each other. And I'll just write here free delivery. And then I'll just copy this text from there and I'll paste that in there. Now I'm going to go in and this left column where the image is inside, I'm going to make its width 80 pixels. And then on the right, I'll add say five pixels padding there to space it out. So I think that looks pretty good. So now we can just collapse that col and we'll just duplicate it. So I'll go here and go duplicate and then here and we'll duplicate it again. So now we have three of them and I'll come back here and then back to content and we'll just position them horizontally in a row. So I'll click and now I'll just go in and quickly adjust these images. So I'll select to delete here and then select image and then we'll choose a wallet and go insert and then this one I will go remove and then select image and we'll select the chat and go insert and this is money guarantee and this is online support so we'll go back to here and let's add a space between the columns of say 20 pixels or even 30 or how about we go to 50 so I quite like that and then I'm going to add more spacing between the icon and the uh, content so I'm just going to open up this column on the right I'm going to go back to the style and then here 
here. I might just push the up arrow until say 10 or even 15. 15 probably looks a bit better. And I'm going to do the same for each column. So I'll just go to here and then I'll do 15. And then for the third column, right, we'll increase this to 15 as well. So that's looking pretty good. The reference design, it looks like they've pulled the icons down a little bit just to keep them in line. I actually prefer them where they are, but if you did want to do that, it's quite easy if we just go up to the column here. So I'll just collapse uh, this column and that column for now, just to make it a bit easier. And then the left and the right. So the column that has the left and the right inside, we could click here, go back to content and then here center. If we click that, that would center them vertically. But yeah, I just prefer it being the top of line. So I'll leave it like that. And lastly is this footer. So I'll come back here and I'll add a section. And I thought I renamed this, but we'll call this the pros of purchasing with our company. And then this section is going to be the footer. And then I'm going to expand that and we will just get the color like that and go back and then here for the footer style and collapse that and then for the background the color will be that pink now we could obviously have saved this along the way click save and then that would add it up there but there's always many ways to do something isn't there and then for the footer let's go ahead and just decrease this padding to say like 25 top and bottom and then i'm gonna add that class that makes the font white so i'll go font white and then breaking it down we have two columns here this is one image over here and then a menu so we can just go up here and go image and then that and then we could do menu and add that in there and then clicking on the container we could sit them next to each other and then i'll click on the image and then i'll go select image and then i'll look for the white logo which is there and go insert and i'll just make that 120 wide here under style so 120 pixels and then for the nav menu if we click on that and go to content we need to actually create that menu so i'll just open this in a new tab and i'll go custom links and I'll call this footer menu and I'll create menu and I'm just going to do custom links here quickly. So I'll just do that and we'll go privacy policy, add to menu. And then here we'll do terms and conditions and we'll add that into the menu and then we'll save that. And now back in Bricks Builder, I think we need to reload the page. Yeah, I'll just reload the page. And then down here, I will select our footer menu, which is there in the top menu. And if we go back to the container, we can sit them here. So space between. So if I click on that, now that pulls them there and we we can also position them center vertically and now they're aligned like that. So let's save this and we'll go preview. So I'll preview and preview on the front end. And this is what we have so far. So the header, the hero, this area recommended for you, that. So that spacing is a bit large. We'll go and edit that in a second. Maybe that spacing is a bit large as well. And then that looks good. And then that and that. So let's go back to edit with bricks and we'll go down and down. So here, so I'll click on this and go style and layout. And then here we'll do padding zero and we'll go down to this one as well and do padding zero. And then is that it? Yeah, so we'll save. And now that should be done. So let's get into designing the responsive versions of the sales page and then also look at some hover styling. So firstly, tackling the mobile responsive versions, let's go to the first one across, which is the portrait tablet. And we can see that there's no padding on the left and right. So we'll need to fix that. And there's a couple more things that we might want to have a look at. Uh, maybe here, I feel like we could neaten this up a little bit more. Uh, but firstly, let's go ahead and add some padding to the sections. So to do that, we'll add add padding to every section in our design. So I'll go up to settings and then theme styles and then down under the element section, we'll go down and we wanna make sure that this applies everywhere on every version of our website. So I'll go back to the desktop to set it and we'll set 20 left and 20 right. So now that will cascade down throughout the different design sizes. So if I go to the tablet portrait, we now have some spacing on the left and right. So that looks a lot better. So that's our first problem. Problem. That's probably the biggest problem for this particular version that I can see. Now, if we go back to the reference website, let's have a look at how they handle this section here. So I'll pull that in and we can see the text is over the image there. So that's not ideal. And as we go down, it looks like that. So, so we still have that problem there. So we want to separate the text from the image so that it's not overlapping. So you can't read it. And if we go down, I do like how this image is on the right. Then this image goes to the left. It makes it a little bit more visually appealing, I guess you'd say. Uh, whether or 
not we do that, I'm not quite sure. But let's firstly separate these as well, the text and the image. So coming back here with this design, so what could we do? We've got to remember that from a, a business point of view, this sales page is all about selling this product. So we don't want to make this product image small. In fact, we probably want to make it equal to the size of this, if not larger, because again, this is what we're trying to sell. But then with that said, maybe this model is the result. And so by using this beauty product, you can do your makeup like this. So that might be the selling point as well. So what I might do here, I'm going to save this in case we need to undo this. And I'm going to go ahead and see what this looks like when we break the image out on its own down here next to the product and then have the text up the top. So it'd be the heading going 100%, the text going 100%, and then two columns with an image in each column underneath. So to do that, I am going to go down to here. And then here for the left, I'm going to go to the style and then layout. And I'm going to make its width 100% at this point. And then for the right as well, I'm going to override the 35% that we set for the desktop and make this 100% as well. So next, I'm going to go up to the container and then to content. And I'm going to sit them vertically. And then I'll go back to the left side that we had. And I'll go to the style. And then I'll come down to the padding on the right. And I'll just reset that back to zero. And then I will go down to the background. So for this background image, we want to set it to none, but I can't see a way to set it to none or like remove the image. So let me know in the comments below if you know how to do that in Bricks Builder. We could obviously go and use some custom CSS. So that'd be one easy way to do it. For now, I'm going to just maybe set a blank space there. And then I might just save that and preview what that looks like on the front end. And I can see it's done background image URL and then nothing in there. So I'm going to do that for now just to keep going with this tutorial. But if you do know how to do that in Bricks Builder to set the image to none on a responsive viewpoint, let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to know how you actually go and do that. But now that we've done that image there, we can come up to here and then we'll just remove the padding on the bottom. So we'll set that to zero. And then here under right, I'm going to go ahead and just clone this image here. So I'll go right click and I'll go duplicate. And then I'm going to select here for content, the image of the woman. So I'll go select image. So there she's there and I'll go insert. So now they're next to each other. And then I'll come back up to here and then I'm going to sit them next to each other. And now it probably makes sense for her to be looking at the product. So I might just swap their order here. And then for this image, we don't want to show it on the desktop. So I'll go back to the desktop and then I'll use the search up here and I'll do display. And then I'm going to set that to display none. So it looks like it was before. And then we'll go to tablet portrait. And now with her selected as well, we need to go from display none to display block. So desktop, she doesn't show there for the second time. And then here she shows. So let's go back to here and then we'll go and get rid of that search. And then we'll go to content. And for the column, gap. Let's set it to our 30 pixels that we've been using in the website. And now I want to make these images take up the 100% width of the columns that they're in. So to do that, I can select the image here and then under content and then stretch, I can click this and that stretches it there. And then we'll do it to the other one as well. So I'll click and then go to stretch. And now they're both stretched there. So looking up, it will look like that. So now we need to add some spacing here. Now we can't go up here and use our margin top large class, which would work here. But then if we go back to the desktop, it's also added the spacing up here. And if we were to get out of editing that global class in here, we would overwrite it just for the desktop and set this to zero because it goes from desktop down to mobile. When we go back to the tablet, it's been overwritten. So the zero is taking priority over this class because we set it on the desktop version. So how would we go about doing that? I'll go back to our desktop and I'm going to remove that class and then remove this margin top. So go back here. We still have that same problem. So what we could do is create a new class and go, margin top tablet and then large. And then for this class, we could set 40 pixels here. And now this class has been defined to have 40 pixels margin top or just the tablet. So if we get out of editing this class and we're, we select the right over here, we can see that that class has been applied for the tablet large. So now if we go back to the desktop and have a look, there's no margin there, which is what we want. And then when we go down to the tablet, there's the 40 pixels on the top. And because 
Bricks works, like I said before, from a desktop version down to the mobile, whatever is set on the tablet will then carry through to the ones below it. So the mobile landscape gets the 40 pixels and then also the mobile portrait gets the 40 pixels as well. So that's how we'd go and handle that. And then down here, would we change anything here? So if we go back to the desktop, this is centered and then over here and go down, these headings aren't. So let's go back and see why that is. So if I click onto this heading and go to collapse this and we go to typography and go down. So it's not centered here. So if we go up to the card bottom and then go to content, you can see that it's centered from here because if we turn that off, that is in fact centering it there. But then if we go to the tablet version over here, it's on the left. So that's not applied. And if we click on it there, that's not working. Let me know in the comments below if you know why that is. But what we can do is we'll go back to the desktop and then under the style tab, I will just center align everything, the text. So then if we go down to the portrait, that's aligned down here, that's aligned. And also down here, that is aligned as well. And then we'll just apply it for the other card bottom. So I'll click over to here and then I will go back to the desktop top and center align this one and then this one as well and then I'll center align that and then we can go through tablet now they're all centered aligned and then down to this area. So we have that problem with the text align center. So I'll go back to the desktop, just do what we did before. So I'll click into here and find it down here in the tree. So the three coals. So I'm just going to collapse all of these. And then for each coal, I'll go to typography and I'll just center the text. And this one too, I'll go center text. And this one will go center. And then if we go back to here, that's centering it. And there it's centering it as well. So I'll go back to here. So now that that's done, let's go down. And this looks good out of the box this looks good and these look good. So no more changes for this layout. I don't feel we need to make. Uh, there is a lot of spacing here. So let's click on this. So let's reduce this space. And I think that's on the left here. So 80 margin top. So I'll just go ahead and override that like that. And now that should look better. So coming back to here, this is gonna be the final version for our tablet, which looks pretty good. So if going back up, so one thing I would do is center this logo. We'll actually do that for the whole design. So I'll go back here and click and then under content, we'll go down and just align that in the center. I just feel like that looks a bit better and that will go through all the different styles there. So next let's go to the mobile landscape. So looking at this, I think the hero section looks quite nice. So we'll leave that for now. If we go down, this looks good as well. These images are far too large. So we're gonna deal with them. And then looking at this, this looks pretty good. We're going to make these smaller, I think. So maybe a max width on these. And if we go down, we have this. So we need to adjust the text alignment. And this one needs a bit of work. And this one looks pretty good. And this one could do some tidying up. So starting from the top and working down, there is one thing that I do want to check with this hero image. So I'm just going to save this and then we'll preview this. And I want to bring it in and see how it works because it does get quite narrow there. So it could afford to go a bit wider, I think. So let's go back here and we'll just exit out of the preview. And on this, if we go to style and let's go to the basic text and you can see I set a max width for 50% here. So I might go ahead and increase that at this to something like 80%. And then if we go up, this is a hundred percent and that is a hundred percent and that's good. So it was just this one that I adjusted and I think that looks a bit better. So we'll leave that for now. So that's the hero. And if we go down, this looks good. And if we go down, these images are obviously too big. So we want to scale them down. I'll probably sit them side by side. So if we go back to the tablet portrait, we really just want this, but a little bit smaller. So I haven't changed anything between here and the mobile landscape. So something's changing. So if we have a look over here with the right selected and have a look. So I notice that flex wrap is wrap here, but if we go up one, it's no wrap. So let's go down and we're going to change this to no wrap. And now they're sat next to each other. But now you know that this image is overflowing over there. So if I save and then preview this in a new tab and go down and then we bring this in, you'll notice that as we go, we hit this design here. So this is going to be the tablet portrait. So this is all working as it needs to be being responsive. The images are sizing down, but then see, as we get a bit smaller, we have the sidebar. So it's overflowing. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I couldn't actually work out from doing this why 
it was changing like this. So if you know, let me know below, timestamp your comment and let me know, you know, what's going on here. But the workaround that I've found for this is just to wrap them in their own block. So I'm going to right click on this image and I'm going to say wrap in a block. And then this one here, we will wrap this in a block as well. So now the right, if we just collapse this, the right is laying out the block and the block instead of the images directly. And that seems to fix the problem. So if we go back to this breakpoint here, that looks good. If we go down, that's fixed there. And then if we go down again, that's fixed there as well. But yeah, definitely let me know what I'm missing there. Still getting my head around everything to do with Flexbox. And I'm sure it's something very simple that I've just, you know, overlooked. But let's lock in that layout there and we'll go down to this next section. And I think this is pretty good, but we will edit these and bring them in. So the three cards here, I'm just going to collapse these so we can see it. Now let's go in and adjust the width of these cards and then we'll center them. So we'll go to card one and then under style and max width, I'm going to try 500 pixels, which I think looks pretty good. So I'll just copy it from there and I'll paste it into card two and then I'll go to card three and paste it in there. Now they're all the same width and I'll click back to the parent container and then I'll go up to content and we're going to align everything inside it. Center. So looking at it, this is what we've achieved so far. Now, one thing that we also probably want to do is add a margin top to the second card and the third card just to space them out. So we could click on the card here and just set it here under style. That'd be one way to do it. But let's go ahead and create a class to this. So I'll, so I'll create a new class. So we'll just call this margin top ML for mobile landscape. And then let's do large here and we'll make this 40 pixels. So I think that looks pretty good. So I'll just exit out of that class and let's go down to the third card and apply that class. So mobile margin top mobile landscape large like that. So looking at this spacing now, I think that's good between the cards. And then I'm going to go ahead and make this image a bit smaller just because it's making the cards very long. So I might click on this and then for the max width, let's make it something like three 350 pixels and I'll just copy and paste that onto each of these other ones there that and then also this as well so reviewing this section now I think it looks a lot better and I'd be pretty happy with this so let's go to the next section so this one here leaves skin if we go back to the desktop and have a look up here so that's centered there so as it goes down that's centered there and then it goes down again if we go down it's not centered here so if we go back to say the desktop and then we go and collapse this and go down to typography. So we haven't set the text align center there. So the thing that's centering it here is if we go up to lead in and we go to content, it's being centered by this. So we just want to go to style and apply the text align center there. And then as we work down through it, it should hold there. So if we go down and then we'll see that heading is there and that is centered as well. So now going down, this all looks good. We probably want to add some padding up above here, but besides that, it looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and add some padding and we'll do it to test testimonial two and three. So I'll click into this one here and go down and just collapse these so it's a bit easier to see. So one, we don't need to touch, but then two, let's go ahead and for here, we'll go margin top and we'll apply the margin top mobile landscape large. So I'll click on that and go up. And I think that separates it quite nicely. So I'll go down to this and apply that same class as well, which is this one and going up. I think that's looking pretty good. Now, one thing we might want to do is just give this a max width so the text isn't so long. So I'll go back to the first column there and then we'll go to style and then we'll go to layout and we'll give it a max width and let's just try and then let's just try 500 pixels and see what that looks like. So I think that looks pretty good. So we'll copy this max width from here and then I'll go to the next one and then I'll paste that there and then I'll go to the final one and then we'll paste that there. And now we'll just go up to the parent and then we'll go to content and I will align to the center. So now this section looks like this. So I think that's looking a lot better there. And then when we come down, we just got to do this area. Now for this area, let's actually do something different. So I'm going to go down to the left here. And if we have a look, this is 52% wide. And then the right with the image, this is 48. So let's click on the container up here and I'll go to content. And if we go up to the tablet portrait, this was no wrap, but Bricks Builder on the mobile landscape changes it to flex wrap. So let's go back to no wrap. So now they sit next to each other 
And then let's go to the right column and let's sit whatever's inside it in the middle, so the center. So we'll leave that one there and we'll go down. This one I think looks good as it is and this one, let's just clean it up. So for this one, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down, I'll collapse these just again so it's easier. So for each of these columns that are in here, I'm gonna click on them and then where they were, if we go up one, they were no wrap and looks like this. And then we went to mobile landscape and Bricks changes it to wrap. Let's just change these back to no wrap. And then I'm just gonna go through for the other two columns and do that as well. So no wrap. And then this one as well, we'll go to no wrap. And then for two and three, let's add that class for the margin up the top as well. So I'll click here. So it's margin top mobile landscape large. So add that there. And then up here, we will add that same class as well. So it looks like that. And then the footer doesn't need any work. So this is gonna be our final result. So I'm just gonna save this. And then let's just preview this and go through how it looks. So the top area as we bring it in like this it will go to there and then going down these have gone next to each other so again I'll bring it out for each section we'll just go through how it's working so that goes down down and now they're under each other and we'll bring that in and then if we go down we'll open this one up again so this one looks like this and as we go down it goes down down and then like that brings them in so I think that looks quite nice and neat and then up this one as well which is here so we'll bring this one in and this goes and then that goes to this and then this one so I'll bring that back out that so goes down to look like that and as we bring it down I think that works quite nicely and then going down here this one is pretty self-explanatory I'm not going to show this one because you guys get the idea and this one here I'll just open it back out goes like this and as we go in goes to there and then if we bring it down that actually looks good so we probably don't need to do any work there and same with that one there we click this it opens up the menu so let's move on to the mobile landscape so clicking on there so the first thing that I can see is that this has broken in this heading module because of our break tag that we added previously in this uh, video today. So we need to go and hide that for this layout. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to add a class here. So it'll be like class equals, and then it will be hidden extra small. And then I'm going to copy that and we'll just save this for now. And then go to wherever you add your custom CSS. For this video, I'm going to go to my dashboard and then bricks and then settings. And then under the custom code tab and custom CSS, I'm going to add it there. So I'll do dot for class and I'll just zoom in and then uh, we'll do that. And this will be display none. And then we just need to put that in a media query. So coming back to Bricks Builder, if we hover on the breakpoint, it says on the tooltip mobile portrait less than or equal to four, seven, eight pixels. So in here, I might just put that on one line just to make it easier for this video. And then we'll wrap this. So I'm just going to indent that a bit and then we'll write at media and screen is max width 478 pixels and we'll just close that. So if it's less than or equal to 478, so that's the maximum, then we're going to display none. So I'll go down and click save settings. So now if I go back here and just reload the page and then from here we go to that break point, you can see that that is now breaking how we want it to be. We actually want to add a space there. So if we go here, that's looking good. That's looking good. That's looking good. And then this one, this is looking good. So I'm happy with this. And what I might do is I'll go down to here and then the style and then layout. We had a max width of 80%. I might just make this go to 100%. And I reckon this one's all good to go. So we'll go down to the next section. And this is looking good as well. So coming back to our template that we're redesigning today, if I bring this in, I like this staggered effect. It has the benefit of being visually appealing. But it also, if we compare this to what we currently have, the images are larger. So the viewer gets more of the image. But it's not over it's not overbearing because it's not taking up a hundred percent of the width so i think it's a really good way to make your images larger without making them overly large and it, it looks like it's an intentional way with how it's designed so let's go ahead and recreate this so the easiest way to do this would be to come back to this parent and then change it from a row to a column and then let's open up these blocks and we'll go into this block here that is for the beauty product and then next we just need to change the order so that the girl appears before the beauty product because that's what we have over here. And I think that works. So because this container is display flex, we can just go down here to the beauty product. I'll just name this a bit easier. And lady, the beauty product will make its order two, and then we'll make the lady one. So now they're swapped. And then in the lady here, let's go to the image and we'll go to style. And then we'll just give it a max width. So let's just say the max width 
could be, so let's just say the max width is 70%, which I think looks good. And we'll also apply that to the beauty product. So I'll come down to here and max width is 75%. So now they're both like that. And now let's go back to the lady container and we're gonna position the cross axis for the children on the end. And now we just need to add some spacing here. So I'll go up to the beauty product and then under the style tab, I'm just gonna do it here. We can do something like 20 pixels. So I think that looks quite nice. Let's go ahead and preview that and see what that looks like. So I'll open this on the front end. So here we are and we'll go down and then I'll just drag this in. So it goes like that, goes like that and then bring it in and then it swaps to this. So I think that looks quite good. And the padding on the sides here, it looks intentional. It doesn't look like something's broken. So I, I like this. I think it works really well. So I think this area is good to go. We'll go down this section. This text isn't centered. If we go back to desktop and go to style and typography, that's not center aligned. So the only one that it's not working for is this mobile portrait. But what we will do, we'll go to desktop and then we'll go and under style typography, we'll go center. So now if we go back to here, so now this is centered and then this text here, we want to make it 100%. There's no max width set here. There, If we click on lead in text, the global class, there is one there. So we'll set all of them to be 100% on the mobile portrait. So it looks like that. We'll exit out of that class. So we'll go down. This looks good. And then going down this. This looks good, all looking good there as well. We need to adjust this. So I'll click on this and we'll just make these two columns 100%. So I'll go back to the container of the left and the right. So back here and we'll go to content and we'll make it a column. Now that didn't change because I've set widths on both of these. So I'll click into left and we'll go to style and we'll change this from 52% to 100%. And then the right will also change this to 100%. We'll go up, so that looks good. Now we wanna add some spacing there. So we'll go and create a new CSS class and we'll call this margin top mobile portrait large and press enter. And then for this, we're going to do a 40 pixels margin top. So I'll get out of editing that class. And I think this product image taking up hundred percent, it's going to look good. And also it is the product. So we just want to make sure that's as you know big and at the center of all of this. And if we go down this, we want to center. So if we go back to the desktop and go up, so it's centered for all of them, except for the mobile portrait, but I'll go back to the desktop and then we'll go to style and just do what we did for the other ones, typography and center. And then we'll go back to the mobile portrait. And now that's centered. We'll go down. This is all looking good. I'm all happy with that. And then going down here, that all looks good. And this looks good as well. So the next thing that I want to do is just look at some hover effects. So if we go back to our demo here, our buttons don't have any hover styling. And if we go down, there's also some other styling effects that I want to add just very briefly. So coming back to here, we're going to go to our settings and then theme styles. And I'm going to go down to element button and go down. Coming back to our demo template, if I hover, it goes this dark green. So I'm just going to get this color. So right click inspect element. And then I want to right click and go to four state and then hover. And then I want to get the hex code from here. And then back in bricks builder, I'm going to go to my settings, theme settings, and then go down to the element button and go down to the style primary. And then in bricks builder, when you want to edit the hover styling, you need to come up to here where it says pseudo states or pseudo classes. So I'll click here and then I will click here and I will select hover. And now any changes that I make to elements is only applicable to the hover state. So if I go down to background color and I click here and then go down, I can paste the hex code. That's what it's going to look like. Now we should do the secondary as well, the pink button. So back here, I'm going to go down and find the pink button, which is here, hover. So there isn't any hover styling there. So back here, let's just create our own. So the style background color, I'll click here for the secondary and I'm going to select that pink color that we have, but I might select here and just make it a bit darker. So I'm just going to pull it down just a bit like that. And then I'll click save. So now let's go back and refresh our page. And if we go down, we hover on the buttons. We now get that darker green color. And if we go down to the pink and hover, we get the darker pink color. So the last thing that I want to do in terms of hover states is coming down here. And for these drop shadows, let's make them a little bit darker when somebody hovers on the card. So I'm going to click 
click on one of these, maybe the first one, and then go to card one and I'll just collapse the cards. And remember this drop shadow is coming from this global CSS class, drop shadow hyphen MD. So let's go ahead and add a hover styling to this CSS class. So if I click on this, now I'm editing this CSS class and then I can go into here and do hover. So now anything with this CSS class, when you hover on it, then it gets the following effects. And I'm gonna go to border box shadow and I'm gonna go to box shadow and I'm gonna change this from zero, zero, 30, zero. And then the color before it was this. And I'm just gonna make it a little bit darker ever so slightly. So now let's save this and we'll go back and reload the page. So now when we hover on these cards, the drop shadow is slightly darker. I think it's just a nice touch. So that wraps up the design of our entire sales page for all the mobile responsive formats. The mobile menu, we don't need to do that because again, a sales page, you're not putting any navigation menus anywhere. You're sending traffic directly to this sales page that's selling a particular product or a particular offer. You don't want them to leave this page and go to your about us page or contact page. You want everyone to only be able to click a button here that takes them to the next step in the sales funnel. So from here, we're selling 20% off our skincare. This button needs to click through to a checkout form and there's nowhere else for a user to click. That's intentional and that's why we haven't bothered designing any menus up the top in the, in the header. So what we have to do now is do the remaining steps of our sales funnel. But what's really good about what we've just accomplished inside Bricks Builder is that the following steps in our funnel are going to be a lot easier. We should be able to copy and paste some things between the different steps. We've set up all our brand colors and styling. So it really shouldn't be that far off being completed. So, so let's jump in and look at the next step in our funnel, which is going to be our checkout page. So let's get into designing our checkout page. So here I am with the template that we were working on. And if I click here, claim exclusive discount, that takes us to this checkout page. So this is a template that we're going to be recreating in Bricks Builder. So to create that step inside our funnel, we'll go back to our admin area and then funnel kit and then funnels. And then I'll click to edit our funnel. And so this is our sales page. So we just need to click add new step and it's going to be a checkout page. And we're going to be using other using short codes. And then because this is a funnel, we're going to select the funnel form type. So I'll go preview and it looks like this. So we have our express checkout options up the top. Then it's the first name, last name, email, phone, the so customer details and billing details, the shipping method, coupon code, the order summary. And then we have the payment information. We can add an order bump, the payment gateways, and then place order. So we also have the option of having a multi-step checkout here. So this is a one-step checkout. If I go to two-step, we can see that we have the express checkout, customer details, billing details, product, and then we proceed to the next step. Once we fill that out, that will take us to the shipping and payment details. We also have a third option up here, the three-step, which breaks it up even more. So we have our express checkout, customer details, billing, the product. If we go next step, that would just go to shipping. And then next step would just go to the checkout. Now for this demonstration, I am actually going to choose this one here, basically just to show you the features that come with the funnel kit plugin, because the one step checkout, you know what that looks like, but you might not know what three step looks like. And that's why I want to do that one, just to show you sort of how this works. So let's go here. We'll go three step and then I'll go import this template and I'm going to call this checkout page and we'll go add. So there's our checkout step. So let's click into it. And now we're under the design tab. So if we go down, I wanna show you that you get two different short codes. So this short code here outputs the main form and then you get what's called the mini cart short code. So let me show you what these two look like so that you know the differences. So I'm gonna copy this first one here and then I'm gonna go switch to the WordPress editor up here to edit this template. So now we're in here and I wanted to do that so I could click to edit with bricks. And now I'm in here editing with Bricks Builder. So I'm going to go and add a new section. So I'll just search for a section and click that. And then in the container, I'm going to add a short code element. So I'll click that. And then in the short code here, I'm going to paste that form short code. And just above it, I'm going to add a heading just so we can keep track of what's going on here. So I'll drag that up. And this is called the form short code. So I'll paste that in there. And for this section, let's give it a background color. So we'll go down here and I'll give it a background color of a pink that we've been using, but maybe a really light pink. Then 
I'm going to go ahead and just clone this. So I'll go duplicate. And then back here, I'm going to copy this mini cart short code and paste that there. And then I'll get the actual short code for the mini cart. And in here, I'll paste that in there. So let's go ahead and save this. And actually, let's just reverse the order here. So the mini cart is here, mini cart. And then the form short code is under it because this would be a bit shorter. It'd be easier, easier for us to look at. So I'm going to save this and then let's preview and then preview on the front end. And this is what we see. So the mini cart short code outputs this here where you can click here, you can enter a coupon code, but it's basically whatever's in your cart and then your total. Down here is the payment sh short code, the form short code. So this is where you actually guide your user from collecting their details through to actually purchasing your product, inputting their credit cards and so on. So coming back to this design that we're going to be recreating, this on the left hand side is the sh form short code. And on the right hand side, this is the mini cart short code. So I just wanted to point that out before we go in and actually design this because we're going to know we need to know the difference between those short codes to be able to put them into our design. So now that we understand how those forms are going to work, let's actually jump into editing our checkout page using Bricks Builder. So here I am inside a funnel kit and I'm going to view this on the front end and then I'm going to go edit with Bricks Builder and now we're in here and editing. Now I've since removed those form short codes because we're going to start from scratch right now, but we'll add them in throughout this obviously. So coming back to the design that we're recreating, if I right click and I go inspect element, what's interesting is how they've coded this section. So they have two different sections and this one up here is for the header and this one up here or down here is for the form. And then inside there, if we just collapse that, we'll open that and then collapse this, we have two different columns, this column here, and then this column here. So the way that they've gone out and coded this effect where it has the pink on the right hand side that stretches to the full most edge of the page is to give this column a background color. So if we go inside here, we can see this has a background of the pink, which is there. And then on the entire section, they've added a background image that is a linear gradient. So if I just turn that off, we can see the columns background color there. And if we go into the actual column and turn that off, we can sort of see how that's working. Now I'll just go back and apply that there. And I'm going to close this. Now, when I zoom out, you can see that it doesn't go the full length of the page when you zoom out, but it gives us exactly what we need. It gives us that illusion that that is what's happening. Now, the way that they've gone out and created this template wasn't how I would instinctively go and do it myself. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to recreate this in the method that I would have gone and done it. And let's just see how we go. This is an Elementor template. Maybe there's a limitation with Elementor and like Flexbox or something like that. But I think we can make this much simpler using Bricks Builder. So here inside Bricks Builder, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add a new section. So I'll add that in there. So we have the section, then we have the container that pulls it in. And then in here, I'm going to add two blocks. So one and two, and this is going to be the first coal. So coal one, and this will be the second. So coal two. And this will be the pink. And then this one here will be the white. So I'm going to go down to this pink column here and go to style and then background. And then I'm going to select a background color from here. And then back here, we're going to right click and inspect element. And then we're going to grab this color and go back and then we'll paste it here. So now we have our two columns, our white and then our pink. So we need to sit them next to each other. So I'll come up to here. We'll go to content. And because this is display flex, we can make them horizontal a row. Now coming back here, I can see that this white column's a little bit larger than this one here. So I'm going to right click and go inspect element. And we're just going to get the section here. So this is 55. So the other one must be 45. So coming back here on this column with the white, we'll go style, layout. And then for the width, we will make this 55%. And then this one here is going to be 45%. So in the white, we're going to add the logo. So I'm going to go back to our sales funnel and I'm just going to open up the sales page that we had and then edit with bricks. And I'm going to copy the logo from here. So the image, I'm going to go control C, come back here and then paste that in there just so it's the same width. So this is looking good. And then under this, we need to add our form. So I may or may not need to wrap this in a block, but for now, I'm just going to add the short code module. So I'll go short code. And then back here, I'm going to go into our checkout page and then go down and get the form short codes for the main form. So I'll copy. And then back here in that short code module, I'll go to content and paste. And let's just go ahead and in the pink, we'll add the short code here. So I'll go short code and add that. And then I will copy the mini cart. So I'll copy that, go back here. And then in here, we will paste that there. So let's just save this and preview it on the front end.
then just to see what we have so far. So it's looking like this. So we need to go ahead and make sure these columns are equal heights. So coming back here, we'll go back to the builder. And then for the container, we will just go and stretch them. So I'll do that. And now they're equal heights. So if we save this and go back to our preview, now it's coming together. So now we just need to go and add the pink background here so that it's stretching over to the right hand side here. So to do that, I'm going to come back to our reference design and I'm going to find that background. So if we go down to the section here, we can see the background image is a linear gradient. So that's what's doing it there. If we turn that off, we can see that that's working. So I'm going to copy this from here and then back here in Bricks Builder, we need to click on our section up here and we need to apply it there. Now, if you go to style and you go down to, if we just collapse that and we go down, there is a setting gradient overlay. And if we click on that, we can apply a gradient to a background, which is what we want. The angle could be 90 degrees like it is in the reference. And we could add a color and this color could be a white like that. And then we could also add a second color down here, which is our pink color, which is this one here. The only downside to doing this is we can't get that hard edge using this. There's no way to make it just stop abruptly here. And so that's why we can't use this feature here. So the way that we're going to do it, I'm going to turn this off. And then the way that we're going to do it is with our section selected here, I'm going to go under the style tab. I'm going to collapse this and go down to the CSS. And then down here, there is a footnote that says use root to target the element wrapper. So by that, it just means whatever's selected, it will target that. So if I write root here and do that, the brackets for CSS, and then we paste in the background image code and click save, and then we'll preview this on the front end. You can see it's not lining up exactly. We're going to deal with that in just a second. But if I right click and go inspect element here, and then we have a look. So this is our section there, B R X E, and then E I T F T C coming back into the builder. If we go back to the builder, this section is B R X E E I T F T C. So by typing in root and then this root is being replaced with the ID of the element. That's basically what this is telling us it's going to do. So now that we've got this, let's go ahead and clean up this line. So the pink is not having this jagged effect. So let's go back to the builder and we'll click out of this and just ignore it for now. It looks like it's working here in the builder, but obviously on the front end, it isn't. So what we're going to do is I'm I'm going to go back into so the section and then you can see this icon here means there's custom CSS applied. So if we click on this, it opens it up down here for us. And then I'm going to change this from being 54% over to just a flat 50 like that. And this is what it's looking like right now. Now let's go ahead and add to our column white a background color. So background color, and then we're going to make this a white and I'll save that. So it looks like that. And now we just need to stretch this the full height of the page. So we'll go back and then for the containers here, we will go down to style and then here under height, we will set this to a hundred percent and then I'll save and we'll go back here and reload. So that's looking a lot better. And now we just need to get rid of the padding on the top and bottom of the section. So we'll come back here and then on this section, I'll go to style and where our padding is a hundred top and bottom from our global settings here, we want to make it zero and zero. So I'll go save and then back here, we'll reload. And now we have this. So we have this all working as it should be. If we zoom out, it looks nice and clean. Zooming in, it all works. So that's how I would have done it without looking at the templates code and seeing how they had gone and done it with the background gradient and so on. Let me know in the comments below if there's any pros or cons or maybe why they've done that using Elementor. But for now, I think using Flexbox and Bricks Builder, this is a good way to go and do it. So the next thing that we need to do is we can see the padding's a little bit off in this form. So if we right click and go inspect element, and then I go up to the form here and have a look, we can see that there is some padding around it. And if we click to see where this is coming from, it looks like it's coming from Woo Funnels. So we probably want to go ahead and then set the padding to zero on that form. And then we'll set some padding on the entire column. So we need to go and add this CSS code somewhere in our website. The thing that I'm realizing is that I will probably want to remove the padding from a, a funnel kit form on every checkout page that I create because I'll always add that padding using Bricks Builder. So I basically want to set this globally for all my checkout pages that have the form embedded. So there's no point going and copying this code from here, then going back to Bricks Builder and then going 
going page settings, custom code, and then pasting it in there because I would have to do that for every checkout form that I create. Because we are using Bricks Builder, one way that we could do it is go to Bricks and then go to settings and then custom code. We could paste it in there. The only downside is that this CSS code runs or loads on every page that's built with Bricks Builder. So if it's your About Us page, it's loading this code as well, which doesn't make sense because the forms are on an About Us page. So how do we go and add this to just the checkout post type? If we get rid of this, we actually can do that using Funnel Kit and then Settings and then Checkouts and then Custom CSS and paste that in there. So now this CSS will only load on our checkout page. So I'll save changes and then come back here and reload the page. And if we right click and just see what's happening, it hasn't taken effect. And we can see it's being canceled out for this one here. So we could maybe just add div there and now that's working. So now of course we're more precise. I'll just copy that from there, go back to here and then I will just overwrite that and then click save changes. And then if we go back here and we reload the page, now that's looking a lot better. Now we'll probably also take it off the mini card over here. So let's just find that as well, which is there. So here, so I'll copy that. And here I'm just gonna write body so we're more precise like that and then padding zero as well. So I'll just do that and then save. And then back here, we will reload. And now that's looking a lot more bare bones. So let's go ahead and start spacing some of this out. So we'll come back here and for the left and right. So for the left, so the coal one, the white, let's go to style and then layout. And for the padding over here, let's go ahead and try 40 on the right, just over here. And then this one here, we might try 40 on the left. And then for our columns here, so the white one, let's add our margin top large class like that. And then let's go in and on top of our form, let's add some margin top. So margin top large like that. So I'll just save that and then preview. So that's starting to come together. Let's now pull the mini cart down. So coming back for this one on the actual column, I might just add some padding. So let's just say like a hundred, we'll try that. So save and then back here, reload. So this is our design here. So you can see that the customer information and mini cart, they're not aligned, but this is a reference as well. So that wasn't true either. I might actually just go and line the tops up of these here. So coming back here, we might say like 110 save and now reload. And that looks like that. So I think that's coming together quite nicely. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and turn our attention to the sidebar here. So let's go ahead and set this up. So under the short code, let's go ahead and add a new element and we'll add a heading. And this heading, we're probably going to make it a H4 and it will say shop with confidence. So I'll just paste that in there. Now I'm going to go ahead and wrap this in a block. So I'll right click and go to wrap in block and we'll just call this shop with confidence. And then we have the heading and then we need to have this list with the icons. So in Bricks Builder, if we search for icon, we have an icon list. So I'll just click to this and then here we'll just change the direction to vertical and we'll just delete these for now. And then I'll go add icon. And then this is going to be a check. So I'll go into the font awesome solid and we'll just search for check and there that one there. So I'll click on that and we'll just copy the first point here and I'll paste that in there. We'll get rid of the background and then this green looks like it's the same color as our buttons. So I'll come into the color and I'll select and then it will be this green that we saved previously. So select. Now you can see the color here, it's white. It's not actually set here. If we change the color to a green, that does work. But if I get out of that, the default, if we go to style, it's updated under typography the color to white here. So we're going to go ahead and just remove that for now and then go back to content and then go back into editing that icon. If I set the color here to green, it changes everything. We only want to change that icon. So we can't do it here. We'll just use a little bit of CSS in just a second. But for now, I'm going to get rid of that. And now we just need to make it bold and a little bit larger. So if I right click and go inspect, the font size is 20 pixels. So I'll get out of that. So we'll go back here and then under the style, tab and then font size we'll do. So I'll just do two rems there. So that's looking better. And I'll go back and then let's just clone this. And then in here, I'll get the text from here. We'll paste that there. And then I'll clone that again. We'll get this text. And then in here, we'll paste that there. And then we'll clone this. And then we'll get the text from here. And then we'll paste it in there. And then the alignment will justify the content at the start. And then for the spacing, we could do 15 there. And now that's looking a lot better. Looking 
about our reference, this needs to be aligned all the way on the left hand side. And then we need to make it the green color for the icon. So if I just right click and inspect element here to see what's going on and then go up to here. So I can see there's 15 pixels padding around this. So let's go back to the builder and then let's go to style and then layout. And it looks like when we added it by default, it comes with the 15 pixels padding. So if we remove that and if we go back to content, we could add some spacing between them. So let's just say 20 pixels or even 15, which looks like this. And then we will change their color. So let's go down here to typography. We'll go color. Let's make it a black or what we could do along the lines of the CSS framework, we could get rid of that color. So we'll just leave that like there. We'll add a new class. So we'll click here, we'll create a new CSS class and we could do font hyphen. And we've also, we've already created it looks like. So if I go font black, looks like I didn't set the styling. Maybe this is from like a previous tutorial or something, but here I'll go into here and I'll select the font to be black for this CSS class. And then I'll get out of that. So now this icon list has that class applied and that class has the font style settings to be font color black. So now let's go ahead and add our, so let's add our margin top medium class. And it seems to add it to all of them. And that's obviously not what we want. So we're going to remove that class from here. And let's just see if we can add 15 there. So it's adding to all of them. So, so what we might need to do is go back here and then remove the spacing of the items. So I'll get rid of that. And then back here under style, let's add five top and five bottom, maybe a little bit larger. So eight top and then eight bottom. And then for this heading, we will go the margin bottom and try the medium. And now that's looking a lot better. So now we just need to to add the green color here. So to do that, I'll save that. And then we'll go to the front end. I'm gonna right click and inspect element and the icons are the IHTML element. So I'll get out of that and go back and then I'll click on this here. So the icon list and then under the style tab, we'll go down to CSS and then inside here, I'll write root and then I. So root is gonna target this and then the I is within it. And then we're gonna make them the color and then we need our green color. So for now, I'll make them white like that. So we know that they're being targeted, but I, but I do need to get that green color. So I'm going to go, so I'm going to go back here and right click and inspect element. And there it is there. So I'll copy that. And then back here, I will paste that there and then I'll save that. And then back here on the front end, they are now green. So that's what we have now. So we need to add some spacing up above here. So I'll go back and then I'll go to shop with confidence and we'll add our margin top large class to that. And then I'll save that and we'll go back. So now we have this looking at the reference there's a bit more spacing between them here and the fonts look a little bit larger so we'll come back to here and then we'll click on the icon list and we'll go to content and spacing in the items we might try say 18 or even 20 so i think that looks good and then we'll go to add our class and we'll do font and then 500 so i'll click this and now it's just a little bit bolder so we'll save that come back here so that's looking quite nice so i'm happy with that so now we need to add these borders to the left and the right of the heading and then center the heading. So if I right click and inspect element here just to see how that's looking. So it looks like they have a divider here, which if we go inside there to the actual uh, separator, which is here, the divider element, if we go in, just has a negative top margin. So it has minus 31. So if we undo that, so that's what's pulling it up. And then the heading above it, which is here, we can see that within the heading, it has a background color. So if we undid that, that's how that's working. So the divider has been pulled up and then the heading has a background color for the content with inside it, which is making it appear as if the divider is sitting next to this. So let's go ahead and recreate that in Bricks. So coming back here to the heading, we have this separator tab. So if I click on this and then click over here, if we said both and then one pixel uh, and then then solid and aligned it in the center. And let's do a width of say a hundred pixels. And then let's save this and just preview that. So that's looking closer. Let's go back and let's just center this and then go to style and typography. And we will center the text here as well. And then let's go back to content and then separator. Maybe we can make this 80 or let's try 70. So we'll save that, go back here and reload. So that's nearly going to the edge. So it's not quite there. So it depends on what we want to do. So we could leave it like that. It's not 100%. It was pretty fast to get set up or we can go and do the divider method. So I'm going to go ahead and do the divider method. So 
we'll come back here and I'll just disable that for now. If you think we could have got a little bit closer, let me know in the comments below. But for now, the heading is here. So let's go ahead and add the divider. So divider, we'll add that under. So there it is there. And then the divider, we'll go to style and then layout and the margin, we're going to pull it up. So I'm actually going to set this because our font sizes is rem and everything else is rem. I'm going to set the divider to rem as well. And we'll go like minus 0.5 rem minus 3.5. And the reason this is getting pulled up as well is because the heading has the margin bottom class. So I'll get rid of it from the heading. And for this now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this in a block and then I'll drag the divider in there. So this is going to be the heading with the heading and divider in there. And then on this heading block, I will go ahead and add the margin bottom to that. And so no matter what is at the top or the bottom here, the spacing here isn't affected. So we'll bring that back and then I'll get out of that. And now for the divider, let's go ahead and just clear the margin and then let's adjust it. So minus, minus 1.5. So that looks pretty good. And then for the heading, we need to center it. So if we go to style and then text center, we'll do that, but we'll go up to here as well. And then for content, we'll go down and align it, the content within it to center. So now it's centered. Now the heading, we need to give it a background color of the pink. So I'll go to the heading and then we can go to style and then I'll go to background click here and then we'll select that pink color. Now, the reason that the line's still going through it is because we need to bring the heading above the divider. So the way that we'll do that is we click on the heading and then I'm going to search up here for position and the position is going to be relative. And then we're going to search for Z index and we'll make this one. And now you can see that sitting above it. So now for the heading, we just want to go and add some padding around it. So I'm going to clear out of that and then we'll go to layout. And then for the padding for the left and the right, we we want to add some to the left and then to the right. So we'll probably want to do this for a couple of headings here. So I'm going to go ahead and create a CSS class. So I'll come up to here to create a new class and we could do, then we could write heading with dividers and save that. And then on the left, we could do like one rem. And then on the right, we could do one rem, maybe just a little bit larger. So two rem and two rem. And I think that's looking pretty good. So we will save that. And then we just need to increase the spacing below this. So coming back to the heading, so the margin bottom medium isn't enough. So we need to go and create a margin bottom large. So I'm going to remove that and we'll go and create a new class because we don't have that yet. I'm going to close margin bottom large and press enter. And then the margin at the bottom is going to be 40 pixels. So we'll exit out of that now and we'll click save. So if we go to the front end and reload, we've gone ahead and successfully set up this section. So now let's go ahead and do what client say. So back in the builder, I'm just going to get rid of this and I'm going to duplicate. So duplicate and call this what clients say. We have our heading in there. So the heading is going to be what clients say. So I'll paste that in there. And then we need to go and create this layout. So we're going to get rid of this icon list. So we will delete that. And then in here, I'm going to add a new container. So I'll just insert that and we'll call this testimonial. And then we have an image, heading, some text, and then stars over there, and then this underneath. So in this testimonial, we're going to create a new block. So we insert that there. And then in here, we're going to have the image. So we insert that, and then a heading, and then some basic text. And I'm just going to copy the text from here, and then the heading. So we'll say name, and this will be role. So I'll paste the role in there, and the name I'll paste in there. The image will go ahead and select it. So we'll go into here, and we actually need to go and save the assets for the checkout page. So I'm going to get out of this, and I'm going to do that from the media library. So we'll go media library. I'm going to create a new folder, and we'll call this checkout page, and I'll go submit, and then we'll click into there. And I'm just going to add new, and I'm going to select files, and then I'll upload them. So there they are. Now back in Bricks Builder, if I just save this and reload and then go to image, select image, go to our checkout page and then this one here and I'll go insert and there we go. So for the person's name, I'm going to change this to a H5 and the role didn't come across properly. So I'll just copy from here and paste into there. And then because I want the image and this to sit next to each other inside this block, I'm going to create two more blocks. So I'll go block, so one and two, and then I'll drag the person's name and role into this block here. So I'll drag that there. And then the image will go into this block. And the reason we're doing that is so that I can come back to here and then I'm going to sit them next to each other. And then I'll give this block a width. So I'll go to style and then I'll go to layout and the width will be something like 100 pixels or even a bit smaller, maybe 90 pixels. And then coming back here to the parent, I'll go back to content and I'm going to align them center. So now I'm just going to collapse these. And now that we've dealt with that, we need to add the stars over 
over here. So I'm gonna go ahead into here and add one more block for the stars. So I'll go there. And then looking at our sales page, if I come down, remember we have some stars there. So I'm gonna edit this with bricks and then go down and then click here. And I'm gonna copy here, so Command C. Back to our checkout page inside this block here, I'm gonna paste. And because the stars is already its own block, I can just drag that up there. We don't need that extra block in the end, so I'll just delete that. And in the reference, they're just a little bit smaller. So I'll come back here, and then for this one, I might make it say 19. And I'll just delete the other stars. So I will delete this, and then delete that, delete that, and delete that. And then for this one, I'll just copy that four times. So Command C, V, 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 and V. And then back here, I'm gonna align what's in there to the end. Now you'll notice we've lost the spacing here. So let's go back into this block here, which contains the three blocks inside it. And then we'll go back to content and we're gonna add a column gap. So let's try something like 15. And now that's laid out as we need it. So now we just need to add this text there. So I'll just copy this for now. And then back here in the testimonial, let's go ahead and add some basic text and we'll call this testimonial text. And then I'm gonna paste the text into there. And then we'll add our margin top small class to that, space it out a little bit. And then this is going to be text aligned to the left. So we'll go to typography and then left. And then we just need to make this a gray color. So let's go ahead and create a new class here and we'll do font gray and then the color let's set this to 666666 so now let's add this divider down here so i'm going to collapse the testimonial and then let's duplicate this so i will go duplicate now we have the two and i'll go into this image here and i'll just edit it so here and then remove that and then upload and then this one here and then insert and then in between here let's add our divider so i'll click onto this and then we're going to search for and then search for divider and add that there and that's going to go in between the two testimonials and then for the divider we could add our margin top large class and we could also add our margin bottom large class which is this one here so now they're spaced out evenly so a few final tweaks before we wrap up this desktop version so we need to add some spacing down here so i'm going to go to this container let's say uh the pink here and then I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to add our margin bottom and I'm gonna do a large class. So that pulls it out a little bit there. Next, we just need to make this divider a lighter gray. So I'll click on it here and then we'll go to content and we might create a CSS class just in case we need to use this gray in the future. So I'll go up to here and I'll do divider gray and press enter. And then let's try a lighter gray. So maybe something like this have a look. So I think that looks pretty good. So coming back to the design, we just need to add these images down here. So under the form, which is here with the short code, I'll add an image. So I'll go image, add that, and then we'll click and then we'll go to select image. And there it is there. We'll go insert. And for this, I'm going to wrap this in a block just so for the block, I can position the things inside it in the middle like that. And then to this block, I'm going to add our margin top large class and I'll go save. And then let's reload the front end. And this is what what we currently have. Now I'll just get this text there. And in the same block here, we could say form footer. And then in that block, we will add some basic text. We'll add that. And then in here, we will paste that text. That's already centered. We want to drag that above the image. And we're going to apply the font gray class just so it's a little bit lighter. And for the image, I'm going to add our margin top class, but I'm just going to do a small one just to space it out a little bit. We'll go save. And then back here, we'll reload. And I'm pretty happy happy with that. So now we just need to change the button color here. Now I've been through the funnel kit settings. I've been through the bricks builder settings. I can't find any user interface where I can change the color of this. It's not in the theme customizer. And so I think we're just going to use a bit of CSS for now. So if we go back to our sales page, I want to show you something. So this is our sales page. And if I right click on this button and go inspect element, and we just have a look here and go down, you can see the background color for our button is a variable. Now the benefit of doing that versus hard coding a hex like 000 for black is that we can go and change it in one place in the global styles inside a bricks builder. And then wherever this variable is used throughout our website, it just updates in the one place. So I'll show you what I mean. So if we go and edit with bricks and then we go to settings and then theme styles, and then we go down to the button element and go down, we can see the background color here. If we click on this, it's actually this saved swatch here. So when you save a color into the bricks swatches panel, a very 
variable is created. And then whenever you apply this swatch throughout your website, the variable is used. And then if you ever need to adjust that color, you just adjust this swatch and then it updates throughout your whole entire website. So because here for the buttons, we have used this swatch on the front end, we have the variable now. So all I need to do is just copy this and this will be the color. And now we just need to apply this variable to the checkout button here. So the way that we're going to do that is back here under funnel kit and then settings and then checkouts and then custom CSS. We're going to add it in there. So it only loads to apply to the buttons for our funnel kit checkout forms. So I'll just paste that in for now. So this is going to be that color and I'm just going to get the thing that we're targeting for the button here. So I'll go down. So that's where the background color is set. So I'll copy this. I'll go back here and I'll just paste that there and then we'll add the CSS in here. So now we just use this variable and we'll go up and we say background color and then we put the variable in there and then I'll just add div here just so we're more precise so that our rule applies and then we'll go save. And now if I go back here and reload the page and now you can see that is working. And if I right click and go inspect element and we have a look, you can see the variable there is working. So going back to our sales page for the button, let's go to our hover state by doing this and then we'll go to the background color and you can see that we haven't actually saved it as a swatch. So if I go to this button, which is here and I force the state to be hover, you can see that that's set as a hex code. So we want to change this to be a variable so that we can use it like we just did. So coming back into here, all we need to do is cut this and paste it again. Then we get the option to save. So I'll go save. Now that is saved there and the variable is created. So if I save this now and I go back to the sales page and reload and we have a look so force element state and then hover and go down, we now have a variable being used. Now we can copy this variable, go back here and I'll just paste that for now. We're going to copy this button. We'll paste that and then we'll put for the hover state, we will use our hover color. So then I'm just going to override that there. And now we have variables being used for the default button and the hover. So I'll go save changes. Now, if we go back and reload the page, so now when I hover on that, that's working. And to show you the benefit of creating the swatch, which then creates a variable that you can use throughout your website, the benefit is that at any time we can go back into here to our settings and then theme styles inside Bricks Builder and then go to our button. And then I could say, I want to change my background color because the branding has changed. Maybe my brand's colors used to be this green. We've rebranded and now this needs to be blue. So I need to change this green throughout my website to blue. I could come into here and then over here, Bricks Builder gives you this ability to edit your swatches. So I'll go edit and then we go and find that color, which is here. And then I can go edit. And now I'm adjusting the color for this variable. So I could say now I want that variable to be say a blue like that. So then I go save and then we go back to the grid. And now that variable, which used to be bricks color J Y I D K has been adjusted from this color to our blue. So if I go and reload the page now, now that has changed to blue and anywhere we've used that blue throughout our website for that variable, it's changed. So we should have also done it for the checks over here because that's our brand's color, the green. So I'm just going to get this variable again. So right click inspect element. And this is that there. So I'm going to copy that J Y I D I K. Okay. And then let's apply that there. So back here on our checkout page, I'll click here to edit the icon list and then we'll go to style and then we'll go to CSS. And there where we hard coded the hex color, I'm just going to replace that with our variable like that. Now it's changed to our blue. So I'll go save and then on the front end, I'll reload. And now that is blue to match there. So now let's just go back and revert that to green. And by doing that, our button should change and this should change anywhere. The variable has changed. We'll update throughout our website. So back here for our theme style. Styles. I'm going to click on here to edit these swatches and I'll go down and then I'll go edit and then I will adjust the color and I'll set this back to the green and then I'm going to save that swatch. So now that variable has been updated to this hex code. So I'll just save this. Now, if we go back here and reload the page, these two should update to green. So we'll reload and now they're both updated. So if you learn anything about swatches here in Bricks Builder, just make sure that if it is a brand color that you'll use throughout your website, you do save it as a swatch. So that creates a variable and then anywhere that you hard code CSS and you're using that color, make sure you add the variable that Bricks generates for you for that swatch. That way, if you ever need to adjust your brand colors moving forward, it updates throughout your whole website when you update it in the one place. But looking at this, this looks really nice, really clean. I think we're ready to tackle the mobile responsive version.
version, which shouldn't take too long. Then we move on to the upsells. So tackling the mobile responsive, let's go to the first one, which is a tablet portrait. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to scale down the font in the pink section and then make this white section just a little bit larger, just so that the form has more room to move, especially if people are typing long names and stuff like that. I just feel like I want to have the form take up more space than it currently is. So to do that, we'll go and collapse these columns. Now the white, if we go down to the style and then layout, it was set at 55%. Let's try 60%. And then for the pink, let's try 40%. So I think that's looking better. So let's go ahead and save that. And then I'll just preview that on the front end. So here on the front end, let's reload. And I'll just bring that in just to see what that looks like. So it adjusts there. I quite like that. We might actually make this text a bit smaller. So coming back into here, I'm going to select the whole pink container here with it. So with it selected, we'll go to style typography, and I'm just going to make this something like 0.9 M. So everything scales down proportionately. Uh, if we did 0.5, just to make sure everything's scaling down, this isn't scaling down. So let's go back to our desktop version and click on it. And of course we did two rems. So let's actually change this to something like 1.5 M's or 1.3 M's like that. And then when we go to the tablet portrait, now that is scaling down. So we'll go back and select the pink container and we'll just reset that. And then we'll go maybe 0.9 M's or maybe even 8.5. So I'll save that. And then we'll go back here and reload the page. And then let's bring this in. And I think that works a lot better. This is the reference website, the template. And if we pull that in, this is how that one looks as well. So the text actually scales down as well. So we've done exactly what the reference does. And then when it gets to that break point, it goes like that and it goes underneath and the cart is hidden, the mini cart. So we'll leave that as it is for now. And then we'll go to the mobile landscape. And this is where we're going to get these two columns. We're going to sit them under each other. So I'm going to go back up to each of these columns and make their width a hundred percent that. So this one, and then also this one like that. And then I'm just going to click on this as well. Go to content and I'm going to make these in a column. Now let's click into the short code here because we did notice the mini cart is hidden on mobiles. So I'm going to go ahead and for the style, I'm going to search for display and we're going to do display none. Now this won't be output. So we should end up with the form here and then going down, we will end up with shop with confidence being first and like this. So with that done, we also need to adjust the padding here. So let's click on the white and you can see there's 40 on the right. So we just want to set that back to zero and then the pink on the left, we'll set that back to zero as well. Now I can see the pink background, the 50% gradient that we added is taking effect there. And if we go back to the desktop, that was set here on the section. We can see the custom CSS. And if I click on that and go down, that's it there. So let's go and copy this code. And then we'll go back to the mobile landscape and we'll paste that there. And we'll say background image and then none. So now that's cleared. And now looking at the reference, the pink needs to stretch 100% of the width. We can see that that's not currently happening. And that's because this section here has 20 pixels on the left and right. If we go back to the desktop, 20 left and right, that was set under our global theme styles and then down to the element section. We set that 20 there and 20 there. So back on the mobile landscape, let's go ahead and for this section, we'll go to layout and we'll just set the padding left and right both to zero. And then for the white container, we will set the padding to be 20 left and 20 right to bring that one in. And then for the pink as well, we'll go 20 and 20. Lastly, we'll add some padding at the bottom here. I'm just going to put it in here. So a hundred pixels at the bottom like that. And now we just need to add some spacing here. So I'll click on this there and then we'll apply a CSS class mobile landscape and we'll do a small and press enter. And this is going to do say 10 pixels margin top. So I'll exit out of that. And then let's apply that same class down here. So I'll go here, margin top mobile landscape small. And now that's spaced out. So now I think the best thing for the testimonials is going to be to center them. So the easiest way to do that is going to be this block here. If we go to style and then we go to layout, we set a width for this block. So we're going to set this to a hundred percent and then we'll go back to content and we are going to center inside that the image gets centered for this block. If we go into here, we can center this as well. And then for the stars, we can center them as well. And then for the testimonial text, let's also center that as well. So we'll go to typography and center. 
And then for the stars, let's add our margin top mobile landscape small class. Give it a little bit of padding there. And maybe just for here, we'll increase the margin top here. So we have the margin top small from the desktop. So let's go ahead and do margin top mobile landscape. And we sort of want a medium. So we don't have that class. Let's create it. So here, margin top mobile landscape medium. And then this under the style tab is going to add 20 pixels margin top. So I'll just get out of editing that class. And I think that's good. So that class, we'll just apply it to this one as well. So we'll go margin top mobile landscape medium like that. And now let's go ahead and center this. So the stars will go back and we are going to center this block. We are also going to center them. And then the image block here, we are going to go to style and then we're going to make it a hundred percent width. And then we'll go to content and we'll center that. And then on the star block, we're going to add our margin top mobile landscape small class there. And then we just need to center align this text here. So I'll go down to typography and center. Coming up to the icon list as well. Let's go ahead and center that. I think that's going to look better. So I'm just going to collapse these and there it is there, the container. So we'll go to content and we will center align. Now that's center aligned and we have a lot of spacing up here. So let's just reduce that. So I'll click on the pink and we'll go to style layout. And I think that's set here on the desktop. We set 120. So we'll come back here and then where we have hard coded that I'm just going to do it locally here and change this to like 30, but I probably would go and recommend creating a CSS class for mobile landscape padding medium. And that would be 30. Actually, let's just do it while we're here. So it will do padding top mobile landscape, and this would be medium. And then this is going to be 30 up the top. So that's the class there. And actually that's not gonna work because we've set it here for 120 on the desktop. So if we did want to use classes, we'd have to remove that as well and then create a new class here. So padding top, and then because it's desktop down, we don't need to specify if it's mobile landscape or whatever, this is gonna be the default. So padding top, and this might be extra large and we'll make this 120 pixels and we'll get out of that. So now the pink here, it has pa our padding top for extra large, which is 120. And then when it gets down to the mobile landscape, this one takes over. So let's see if that works. So this is it. And let's just pay attention to the padding up here. So as we pull it in, that's 120 and then it should go down to 30. So let's have a look here. So that didn't work. I think it's because this one here is showing and then this one is showing after. I think the order does make a difference. So let's go ahead and let's just remove those for now. And then here we'll add padding top and we'll do our extra large and I'll get out of that. And then let's apply our padding top mobile landscape medium and I'll go save. So back here, let's go and reload the page. And now if we have a look, it's 120 up the top and it goes down. And if we go down now, it is like that. So that is what we wanted. So that's worth noting. I actually didn't know that is that the order that you apply the classes in bricks actually makes a difference. So by just changing the order we applied these CSS classes to this here, we've achieved what we wanted. So now we just need to go and add some spacing at the bottom here. So to add this, let's go down and add it on the footer here. So the form footer, we will apply the margin bottom large. So I'll apply that there. So you can't see the changes there, but you can see if I hover, there's 40 there. So I'll go save. Then if we go back and reload the page here. So now if we pull this in and have a look, that is spaced out how we need it. So last thing that I'll do here is for the logo here, I'm going to come up to here and go content and just center the logo and the form. So I'll save that and we'll go back here and we'll pull that in. And now that looks a bit better. So looking at the reference website, this is what we set out to do. And then this is what we set out and actually accomplished. So I'm pretty happy with that. I did notice we haven't added the footer yet. So we're gonna to wanna to have this throughout our whole entire website. So I'm gonna go back to my admin area and then go to funnel kit and then funnels. And then I'm gonna go into our sales funnel and I'm gonna open up the sales page. I'm gonna go down and remember we designed it here. Let's go edit with bricks and go down to find the footer in here. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to go copy. And then in our dashboard, because we're probably gonna use that same footer throughout our whole entire website, our about us page, our contact, 
contact page and so on. I'm just gonna go and add that site wide. So here in Bricks, I'm gonna go down to Templates. I'm gonna go Add New and call this Footer. And the template type is gonna be Footer and I'll go Publish and then I'll go Edit with Bricks. And then I'll paste our footer there. So it is at the bottom. And then under Settings and Template Settings, the conditions, I'm gonna show this on my entire website. If we only wanted to show this on our sales pages and checkout pages, we could go if the post type is equal to, and we could go landing pages, sales pages, checkout, and so on. We could do that because the post types for funnel kit are listed here. But again, I'm just gonna do this site wide for now. So I'll get rid of that and I'll go add condition here and then entire website. I'll save this. So now let's go ahead and view our sales page just to make sure that has taken effect. So we'll go to the bottom. As expected, we have two. We'll come back into our sales page design and go back to the builder. And then from here, we can just delete it. So I'll go right click and go delete. Now it doesn't show there. I save this. Now on our sales page, it is shown at the bottom. And if we go back to our checkout page and reload it and scroll down to the bottom, now that is output at the bottom. So now that we've designed our checkout template, let's move into designing our one-click upsells template. So here I am under funnel kit and then funnels, and I'm just gonna open up our Elementor reference funnel that we're building, and I'll open up the upsells template. So this is what we're gonna be recreating inside a Bricks Builder. So we have the header up here. We have some text here that says, wait, there is a limited time offer. This is what the offer is. And then a little bit of text here, sentence, the featured image, which is gonna be dynamic, as well as the product title. These will be dynamic as well, based on the product that we assign to the upsell step. Then a button, yes, add this to my order, which charge their credit card again. No, if they click this, then they just go to the next step in the funnel. And then we go down a little bit. This section we can copy and paste from the sales page. It's just the testimonials. And then down here, we can also copy this from the sales page. And then this will be quite easy to do. And then our footer. So that's what we're gonna be recreating in this section. Now, when I go and do my one-click upsells, I actually prefer to not have a header on the upsell page. So I'll right click and go inspect element. And I'm just gonna go up and quickly delete that just so I can explain why. And it's all because of what you just saw. When you don't have a header, this moves everything up the top. And so we have to remember your customer is gonna go from your sales page, which is here. They see the offer, they click this button here, they go to the order form, they're going down, yeah, okay, cool, I want that. They place the order and they're not expecting an upsell. So when they click this button here, I like to make sure the page loads and it says right at the top, wait, here is an offer for you. There's no need to have the logo there because they've seen the logo on the sales page so they know that they're on the, on the right website. They go to the checkout form and our logo is there so they know that they're still on the same website. And then this, we just wanna make it apparent that wait, here is an offer for you. There's no reason to have the logo in my personal opinion. So I'm not gonna add the header here on the one click upsells page, but the rest of this page we are gonna design here today. And I'll show you how to add this so the featured image and the product title and stuff like that is dynamic based on the product in there. So let's get stuck into creating this inside a Bricks Builder. So back here, I'll go to Funnel Kit and Funnels and I'll go back into our sales funnel that we're building with Bricks Builder. And we just need to add a new step. So I'll go add new step and this is gonna be our one click upsells. We're gonna use other short codes and I'll go start from scratch. And I'll call this Beauty Upsells and I'll go add. And now that's been added. So let's click into this funnel step and I wanna draw your attention to this here. So if you're using something like ClickFunnels, you know that when you create your funnel, each upsell and downsell is its own step in the funnel. Funnel Kit actually does this a little bit differently. You have, if we go back, we have one funnel step here, which is our upsells. But if we click into this, in that one funnel step, this is where we create all of our upsells and all of our downsells. So we add multiple steps in here. So I just wanted to clarify that in case you are coming from another sales funnel software and you're looking at using Funnel Kit. So this here, it's an upsell, but if we want to go and add a downsell, we'd go add new offer. And then I could call this downsell and this might be makeup brush. And then I'd say this is a downsell and click add. And now when people go through our checkout form and they purchase, they see this upsell here. And if they say no to this, then they see the downsell for the makeup brush. And then they would go to the next step in the funnel, which is going to be our thank you page. Now, the reason that I wanted to cover that now in this video is that each offer, so your upsells and downsells can be assigned a different design. You could assign the same design to every offer on your website, which I'll show you how to do in today's video, or you could come into here under the design tab, and then for each upsell and downsell, you could change the design of just that upsell. So firstly, let's go ahead and recreate this design here inside a Bricks Builder, and then we'll probably look at assigning that to all of our upsells and downsells in Bricks.
Bricks Builder. And later on in this video, I'll show you how you could break it out and have maybe all your offers by default have this design here. But then if you wanted to overwrite that for just one particular offer, I'll show you how to also do that inside of Bricks Builder. So let's go ahead and let's start recreating this. So back here in funnels, let's go to our Brick Sales funnel. And I'll just delete that sample offer that I created before. And we'll work on this one here. So I'm going to rename this. So I'm going to call this Beanie right now. It's going to be an upsell and I'll rename this to Beanie and I'll go update offer. And then I'm going to inside this offer, which is an upsell for the Beanie, I'm going to add product and I'll search for Beanie. And we're going to choose this one here. So I'll go there and we'll go add. And there it is. So it's turned on. So we will say uh, this is $20. Let's give 50% off here. So it will be $10 and I'll save that. And let's just see what this looks like out of the box. So I'll go into design and go down and we can preview. And you can see it doesn't come with anything. So we need to change that. So back here under the design tab, like the forms that we were working with in the checkout step, if we go down because we're using other short codes, when we scroll to the bottom here, you can see that these are the short codes that we can use to dynamically output data based on the product in the offer. So, so you can see that if it's a variable product in the offer, we can output the drop down, the quantity selector, an image slider, the offer price, product title, short description, regular price, sign up fee for the WooCommerce subscriptions, recurring total, product price full, how much they'll save as a dollar figure, as a percent, how much they'll save, single unit price for for the bundling of products and so on. Now, we will learn more about them as we go and build a page and I start copying and pasting some of them into our Bricks template. That'll make more sense. So if that doesn't make sense, don't stress for now. So now that we know how to create the offer and that we'll be using these short codes to dynamically output data into the page, let's go ahead and build our Bricks template. So I'll go up. So again, under the design tab, I'm gonna go edit template. And then in here, it's important to go to the template and where it says funnel kit box, you wanna click here and we wanna change this to be the default template, not the canvas for the page builder, just the default. So then I'll click update and then let's click edit with bricks and bricks builders loading. And now we're in here and editing the template. So I'm going to add a new section and then back in this container, let's add some basic text and then we'll add a heading and then we'll add some more basic text. Now we could go down and add the picture and all this other stuff into that same container over here, but I'm gonna separate this. So I might say this is a lead in and then I'll add a new container like this. And then this can be the product data. So the image product title, the offer. So actually let's call this offer. So this would be the container for our offer. Now, because this is gonna be dynamically pulled from the product assigned to that offer step and then output its featured image, and so on. We're not going to go back to Bricks Builder and add an image module. We're going to add that short code. Now, if you're watching this video without having used Funnel Kit, it could be a little bit confusing where I am because there are a couple of different things that we're doing right now. So I think the easiest way for you to follow along is every time I show you a change like this where I'm getting a short code, I will start from Funnel Kit Funnels and I'll click into where I get the data from just so you can get used to how it all works. So I would go into my brick sales funnel, go into my upsells and then go to the design tab and then scroll down. And then we have these short codes. So I'm going to get the product image slider. So I'm going to copy that. And then back here in bricks, I'm going to add a short code element. And then in there, I will paste that there. So let's save this. And then we can preview on the front end. And you can see it's outputting the image of the beanie there. So back here in my offers, if I go back to the offers tab and I got rid of this beanie. So I delete this and then I add another product and go t-shirt and add and then save. Back here, if I reload the offer, this image updates to a t-shirt because the short code is dynamically getting the featured image of the product assigned to the offer. Now I had planned to build this template using the beanie, but I'm just thinking right now, it's probably better to make this using a variable product so that we can output the variations drop down and stuff like that and show you how that would work. So coming back to our products, if I look at this V-neck t-shirt and go view, this will have the color. So you can select the color and then the size. So let's go ahead and add this to our offer. So back here, I'm gonna remove this and go remove. And then I'll go add product and then I'll type V-neck and there it is there. I'll go add and then we will just output all the variations and the default will be this color here. So I'm happy with that. You got to sign discounts based on the variation, but I'll just do that overall. So I'll say it's a percent on the regular price and we might give 50% off just for uh, easy numbers here. So I'll go up here and go save and I should actually 
rename this to v-neck t-shirt and we'll change the url so v-neck t-shirt and we'll go update offer so with that done let's save it and then back on our design let's reload this and there it is there so remember this is a short code for a slider so if there's only one featured image it just outputs the one image like you just saw if there's multiple it does create the slider like this so we get the arrows over here we get the gallery underneath you'll notice there's no drop down to select the variation because we haven't added that short code to our template yet which we will do in just a second so let's go back to bricks builder and i'll go back to the builder and let's keep going so i will rename this and say offer slideshow and going down we need to add the product title and the button so back here i'm gonna add a heading so i'll add that and i'll also add a button element and then we need some basic text under that. And I think that's a good start. Let's style all of that before we move on to this next section. So coming up to our lead in, I'll just collapse that and open that. So let's go ahead and center everything inside here. And then for the heading, I will paste the text from the template and let's make this a bit larger, H2. And we also need to go to the typography here and just center align that. And then the basic text here, let's go ahead and get the background color from here. So that's that. And I'm gonna set up a class for this. So I'll go background pink medium and press enter. And then we'll go under the background tab. And then I'm just going to go down here and paste that in. And we will actually create a swatch for that. So I'll click save. Now we have light, medium and the actual full color. So I'll get out of editing that class. And then we need to add padding around it. If you recall before, we have our padding medium class that we created, so I'll just click that, and that is giving it 25 pixels around each side. And now we just need to make the text pink. I think we did create a font pink class. There it is, like that. And then let's assign our font 700 class here to make it bold, and we'll get out of that. We also need to make it uppercase. I'm not sure we created a text uppercase. No, we didn't. So let's go ahead and create that. So I'll click back into here and go text uppercase and press enter. And then for this, we will go down to typography and we'll go uppercase and I'll exit out of that. So now for our heading, let's add some spacing up top. So we'll go margin top medium and I'll go enter. And then we'll also do the same for down here. And I think this, looking at that, it's again, I like to bring stuff on my page up for this offer. So I'm gonna go back and for this, I'm going to reduce it. So I might go margin top small and apply that. Now let's apply our background color. So I'll right click and go inspect and have a look at the color. So I'll copy that. And then let's go back to the background color and go in here. And if I hover on this, I can see that it's actually this swatch here. That's the same hex code that I just copied. So let's go ahead and create a new class and we'll call this background pink light and press enter. And then under here for the background color, we will assign it this swatch there and then I'll exit out of editing that class. Now back here, I need to go to content and just change the text. So wait, here's an exclusive offer for you. So for here, let's reduce the padding on the top. So I'll go to style. So here, let's just do 50 for the top to bring that up. And then I'll copy this text from here. And then in here, I'll go to content and paste. And then let's add some spacing on the image here. So I'll add our margin top and our large class. Try that, I'll click save. We'll go back here and reload. So I like that and how grouped it is. So now we wanna put a max width on this just so it's not stretching the full width of the page and then center everything inside there. So we'll come back here, go to the container and then we will center the stuff inside. And then for the office slideshow, we'll go to style and then layout. And then let's set a max width. We might try 800 pixels to start. So I'll go save and we'll go back here. And I think that's looking pretty good. That's probably too big. You wanna be able to see the whole product in the one screen, I feel. So let's go back and let's just do this to like 700 pixels and actually I'm zoomed in here. So let's go back to hundred percent like that. So this is what that's looking like and I am happy with that. So this is the reference and this is what we have. So coming down, let's go ahead and finish off this area. So go back to bricks and then for this heading, we will add a margin top and we'll do the large class. And then the button will add a margin top and do medium. And then for this one down here, we'll do the margin top and we'll do the medium as well. So now we need to add the product title into here. So back here for our offer, I'll go to the design tab and I'll go down and then it says product title. I'm gonna copy it from here. And then back in here, we, you can't actually paste short codes into the heading module. If you do that and save it and go back and reload, you can see that it doesn't actually render the short code. The easiest thing to do
do here is just to create a shortcode module. So we'll go up to here and search for shortcode and we will insert that. And then I'm gonna delete this heading. So I'll go delete and I'll just rename this shortcode to offer title. And then we'll paste the shortcode in there for the product title from WooFunnels. And this shortcode module is basically just allowing you to render the shortcodes, but you can also add HTML into here. So we could add a say H3 into here. So I'll do that like so. And then the shortcode will render inside that. So I'll go save. And then if we preview this on the front end and go down, you can see there it is there. And if we right click and inspect element, you can see it's just put the shortcodes content, the product title inside of our H3 tag. So we'll just go ahead and center that. So coming back here, we'll go to style and then I'll go to typography and we'll just center and then save. Now, if we go back and reload the page and go down, now that's centered. I probably want to increase the gap here because we removed the heading element and added the shortcode element. We just need to go back to that shortcode element and add our margin top large class to that. And I'll go save. And back here, let's have a look at what that looks like. So I'm happy with that. Let's go back and then let's edit the button text and we'll say, yes, add this to my order. And then I'll get this text here and we'll paste that down there. Now we need to add two lines to this button. So yes, add this to my order. We will ship it out in the same package. So back here, we just need to add a bit of HTML. So I'll go span and then span. We will ship your items in one package. And then here we could add some inline styles. So style equals and change the font size there, break it to a new line. Or we could also go to the style tab down here, then CSS. And then because we're targeting this button, we could write root. Again, coming back to this targets the element that we have currently selected, which we covered previously in today's tutorial. And then inside this button element, any spans, we will open this up and then we could do font size 0.8 M's or 7 M's to scale it down a bit more, display block to break it to a new line and then text transform none and then bring the line height to 1.1. And that looks like it needs a little bit of padding at the bottom. So let's save that and then preview that on the front end. And if we go down, so that obviously hasn't worked. And if we have a look at the code here to see why. So uh, if you can see that they're sitting next to each other. So if we go back to the button here and we have a look, if we go down a little bit. So this is display inline flex. So that means that whatever's inside it is gonna be displayed as a flex box, the children inside there. So what we will need to do is if we go back and just exit out of this. So because it's getting the immediate children of this, let's actually like skip a level and wrap this in a span and then we'll go and end that span over there like that. And then let's go to style. And then instead of just getting all the spans in there, which now everything's in a span, we wanna go to one more level deeper. And now only the second span is adjusted to be a smaller font size. So let's save that and go back and reload. And that seems to have worked. So remember the flex attributes only apply to the direct children. So what we did is we wrapped it in a span. So the direct children isn't this or isn't that so that now they're not flex. So that's how I would have overcame that. If you have another way that you would have done that, let me know in the comments below as well. I'd love to know how you would have done it. But now we just need to do this. So let's go ahead and underline this. I'm gonna create a class for this. So I'll just call it underline and press enter. And then for this, we'll go down and we're just gonna underline it there. And I'll exit out of that. And we wanna make it bold. So I'll go like font and try 500, maybe a bit bolder, we'll get rid of that. And we'll try font 700. And and press that, that looks good. So now let's go ahead and make the button a bit larger. So I'll select the button and we'll go to layout or sorry, content. And then the size, we can make it a bit larger. So large, uh, or we could try extra large just so they don't miss it. So I'm happy with that. Now, one thing to point out here is that you need to make sure you have enough spacing between your no and your yes. So that somebody on their mobile phone doesn't accidentally click the yes when they meant to click no. So I'll click back into this and we'll call this no text. And then I'm gonna remove Move the margin top medium and I'm gonna add the margin top large and we'll go add. Now let's make this a little bit larger. So let's apply our text large class here, which is this one, which is 1.2 M. So it scales it up, which is 1.2 M. So I'll get out of that. So I think that's looking pretty good. So I'll save that. And now let's preview the final bit for the top area. So here we are gonna look like this, that you can interact with the slideshow up there, going down the name of the product, yes or no. So now that we've done that, let's go back and then go back to the editor 
and let's add our testimonials again from our sales page. So going back into our brick sales funnel, we'll open up our sales page and then I'll go edit with bricks. And then I go down to the testimonials, which is here, just click on it. So I'll collapse that. I might call this uh, testimonials skincare. And with that done, I can right click and then I can go save as global element. So now we have this globe icon over there. So now back in our design, if I go down the bottom of the page, we have this here. And I didn't actually need to reload this page here. It just showed. So for example, if I delete this, okay, so it's not down there. And then I go back to our sales page. There's no globe icon there. Now, if I right click and then I go save as global element, it adds the icon there. If I go back to this tab, it's added there. How cool is that? I think that's so cool. Let's go ahead and add this to our page. And it doesn't look like it's pulled across all the content. I'm not sure what's going on there. If that's just like something to do with my browser or something, uh, but that hasn't worked. So let's delete that. So I'll go delete. And then back here, I'm going to copy from here. So I will go copy and back here, I will paste down there. So that seems to have worked. I'm not sure why it wasn't working when I added the element directly. A bit weird. Maybe it's a bug with the current version, uh, but we're just going to keep going. So what I'm going to do now is I want to add some padding here. So I'll go into style and then layout and I'm editing this global element and it has the zero, but let's remove that and add say a hundred there and then save. And then if we go back here and have a look, it's added it there as well under style and layout. It's added it. That's pretty cool how it just updates throughout the tabs. But this is also a good example of how things just change as you're building websites. So because we are going to reuse this white testimonials area throughout as a global element, we probably want to have the, the padding here set on this. So let's go ahead and go to this section up here, which won't be used throughout our website. And let's remove the padding at the bottom. So I'll go zero. So now we've reduce that spacing there. But now we can reuse this section. I'll just quickly save this back in our design. And now we're ready to go design the next section. But that's how a global element works inside Bricks Builder. So with that, we've completed this section. So let's go to the next one, which is our testimonial. And again, we can reuse this from the sales page. So on the sales page, I'll go down to here. So I'm going to make this a global element. Again, if you're only using this a couple of times, and maybe you want to change it, you might just copy from here and then paste it here. But if you're using this exact thing on multiple places on your website, you probably want to make it a saved global element. So I'll go ahead and delete that. And just like we did before in the sales page, I'll right click and go save as global element. And then back here, if we go down now, that should have shown. So there it is there. So I'll just click, see if that works, expand that. That hasn't worked either. I think it must be a glitch with this version of Bricks Builder. So I'll go ahead and delete that. And then over here, I'll copy this global element. So copy, and then we'll paste that there. So that's that section covered. And now we just need to go and create this. So whenever I'm looking to create a new section, I'm always trying to think of something that we've created previously that I could copy and paste to be a good starting point. And the closest section that we've already designed that best mimics this one here, I think is going to be this section here on the upsell page we've been creating in this section. Because we have the button, we have this text here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this to start. So if I click on this, there's a container for the offer. So I'll right click and then go copy. And then right down the bottom, I'll just collapse everything to make it easy. I'm going to go up to here and add a new section and I'll add that there. And I'm going to call this get this offer. And then in this section, I'm going to paste that container. So if I expand this and I'll just delete this empty container that came when we created the section. So I'll delete that. And now we're off to a decent start. So let's go ahead and add that blue color to the section. So if I click on the section and I go to colors here, I haven't actually saved this blue color as a swatch. And I know that we use this blue color on the sales page. So here on the sales page, this is that section where we created that blue swatch. And so I'm going to click on this section and then I'm going to cut and then paste that there just so we get this option to save. And I'm going to save this blue as a swatch. If you've jumped to this point in the video, definitely go back and watch the section of this video where I cover color swatches, because if you're ever reusing a color throughout your website in Bricks Builder, you want to get in the habit of creating a swatch because when you save a color as a swatch, it creates a variable and that variable we can use throughout our website. And then if we ever need to adjust this swatch in the future, we can come into here, we can edit the color of this swatch and it will update everywhere throughout our website. So that's why it's important that we're reusing this blue here. It wasn't saved as a swatch. So I've just gone ahead and saved as a swatch. So if we go back to this open tab and what's really cool is I don't have to go and reload this page here because the tab was open and I made that save in this tab over here. It's pushed the changes into this open tab so I can come down to background, click here and it's already 
already there. So I can click on this and now that swatch is loaded. Now, next we need to make the text white. So I'll come up to here and I'll do our font white and I'll just apply that. So there it is. And then I'll expand this and we don't need the office slideshow. So I'll delete that and we don't need the title. So I'll delete that. So now we have these two elements, which are what we needed down here. So let's go ahead and add these. So divider, heading and some text. So I'm going to go up and just copy from here the lead in. So I'll copy and then I'll go down to here and then I'll paste and I'll just drag that up to there. And then in the lead in, I'll drag the divider above and the divider needs to be white. So I might create a CSS class there. Again, I'm trying to get in the habit of these utility classes. So I'll do divider white and press enter. And then under here for the color, I'll make it the white and I'll pull that down. And then for this text here, I'll make this the font white as well. So I'll apply that. And then let's add some spacing up the top. So we'll do a margin top and we'll do medium for this like that. And I'll just rename this to container. And then above the button, we'll add some basic text. So I'll just go up to here and go basic text and add that. I'll drag it up there and then I'll copy this text from there and I'll paste it in here. And then let's style that and typography will be center and we'll add a margin top and we might make this a medium as well. So now we just need to increase the font size and bring it into a max width. So on this basic text, I think we have a max width class. Yes, yeah, 75%. So I'll apply that. That's pulled it in. And now let's go ahead and make this text larger. And looking at this, if I inspect element, this is 20 pixels. So we need two rems here. So I'm going to go and create a new class. So I'm going to call this text and then two rems and press enter and then typography font size will do two rem and get out of that and then for the line height we just want to make it a bit smaller so line height smaller we'll apply that class there that pulls it in and I might just increase the spacing between the button and this text so margin top medium I'll just change that to margin top large and apply that and then the padding around this is a lot tighter. I think with a call to action near towards the footer, I do like to actually make it a bit tighter. I think this is quite large. So for this, let's go ahead and create a new class. And I was just playing around with Tailwind, which is a CSS framework that I'm going to be doing some tutorials on coming up. And I quite like how they do this. Again, we're, we're learning. I'm learning a lot, even, even as I do this video here. And so for this, if we want to adjust the padding here, I might actually say I might do padding. And then, and then we want to adjust it just for the top and bottom. So I'll do Y for the Y axis. And then I'll do two rem and press enter. And then layout for the padding on the top, I'll do two rem and then two rem on the bottom. I think that needs to be a lot bigger. Let's try a five rem and five rem, which would be 50 pixels. I think that's a lot better. And then we'll just edit our class name up here to five rem to match and press enter. So padding for the Y axis, which is the top and bottom five rems, which would be 50 pixels. And I'll go save. So again, I've been learning throughout doing this video, doing other videos in the background while I work on this one, playing around with Tailwind. Be very interesting to see how doing these sort of things and these paddings and utility classes will evolve and what I'm doing with my naming conventions in, you know, six months from now. It'd probably be a lot different to what I'm doing today, but I'm excited and I'm excited to share what I learned throughout learning that myself with you. So that looks a lot better. So I'll save that. And then back here, let's reload the page. So there it is there. We'll go down, down, down. And that is there. So now let's go ahead and do the mobile responsive version. So I'll just pull this in. I think this top area is going to be fine, uh, pretty much on all viewports. So I don't think we need to play around with that. And if we go down, this one should work pretty well as well. This one, we probably want to center the text. So we want to center the text from the desktop down. So I'll come back to here and then I'll go to typography and I'll center. And to be honest, throughout this entire video, we should have gone up here and done a text center plus class and then applied that there. And then whenever we want to do the text center, we would go over to here and apply that class. But if we go through it now, that is looking how we want it to be. We might want to decrease the line height on this one specifically. So I'll do line height and we'll make it small, just pull it in a little bit. But this upper area should be good to go. Going down and having a look at this, we've already designed this from the sales page. So if I pull this in, this looks good. We've already gone through that, like I just said. And then this one here, we've already designed on the sales page as well. So I'll bring that in. That's looking good. And then if we go down to this one, uh, we'll just have a look at how this one's going here. So we want to make this the max width 100% from, we'll keep that 75% there. Remember we have our max width 75% class there, but as we go to the mobile landscape, let's make that 100%. So we'll create a new class and we'll go max width mobile landscape 100% and apply that. And then we'll go to the layout.
out and the max width will be 100% here. And I'll exit out of that. And again, as we pointed out, the order at which we apply these classes inside Bricks Builder matters. But as long as you apply them from the desktop, which is the max width 75, and then apply the mobile after that, which is a max width mobile landscape 100, because our mobile is after our desktop, this will work. So if I go to the desktop, this is 75%, 75%, and then here, 100%, and then there, 100% as well. And we'll center align this as well. So I'll just click on this and we'll apply our text center class to this one as well. And we'll also apply our line height small to that as well. And then I'll open that up. So finally, let's view this on the front end. So I'll pull this in, pull that in. Uh, so we want to center that text as well. So I'll go back here and then to this one here, I will apply the text center class to this and press save. And now if we go back and reload and pull it in, this should be good. So I'm happy with that. That looks really nice, neat and tidy. Uh, yep, so that's good. And then this area we've already been through from the sales page. This one as well, been through. And then this one as well. So this is looking really good, really nice and neat. So the last thing that I wanna cover before we go on to designing our thank you page is adding a variation drop down to this because remember, this is a variable product. So to do that, we'll go back to editing with Bricks Builder and we'll go down. And then for me personally, I think it makes makes sense most of the time to add the variation drop down right near the image. So if we have the slideshow here and then the product title somewhere around there. So let's go ahead and we'll add another short code module there. And then we'll call this variations drop down. And then coming back to our drop downs, we want this, the variation selector form. So I'll copy this and then back here in that short code element, we'll paste that there and then I'll go save. And then we'll just reload the front end and there it is there. So we'll give that a max width as well. So style and then max width, we might just say 600 pixels and press save. And then we also wanna add some spacing on the top of this. So we'll add our margin top medium class to this one and do that. So I'll save this. And then on our front end, I'll just reload. And then we scroll down, you can see these are the drop downs. And so people would go, I want you know the blue and I wanna have this size here. And then they would add that to their order and then you charge their credit card again and take them to the next step in the funnel. But if you're not comfortable right writing your own CSS, one trick that we could do right now is the following. We could go back here and we could go to this section and we have this class applied background pink light. We could remove that and then create a new class and call this background gradient. And this could be pink to white and press enter. And then under the style tab and then under gradient overlay, we could apply to the background and then the angle would be zero and the colors, we could make this a white white color. So I'll just drag that to white. And then under that, we could add another color. And this second color would be our light pink. So it would start from pink up the top and it would go and fade to white at the bottom. So now if we save that and then come back here and reload the page, and now this could be our final result. So it comes down, these stand out. So they're not gonna miss them when they're scrolling past. It looks a lot better here than when it was on the pink background. And we come down here and then we're still in the content. We could add a border here or maybe a nice background background texture would look good here. But I think that's a very easy way to make our drop down stand out here if you don't know CSS. And for the remainder of this tutorial, I might actually go as far as to just leave that like that. And we'll go back to the editor and this hero image. I'm just gonna remove the margin or the padding on the bottom. So I'll just set this to zero, pull that up and I'll go save. And then I'll go back here and reload. And I think this might be our final layout for this design today, which looks like this. And so you can see, I just removed that then, and then this is that. So now that we've gone and completed the design of our upsell page inside Bricks Builder, if we go back to our WP admin menu area and go to funnel kit, funnels, and then we click into our sales funnel, and then we click into our offers step. For this V-neck t-shirt, we have one offer here, as you know, and we've designed what that offers page will look like. If we were to go and add a new offer here and say this was a downsell, and this could be for the beanie, and then we went add, and then we added the product here, and then 
we searched for the beanie and we added that there and added that in there and activated this and saved. When we go into the design tab here, we created that upsold design when we were editing this offer for the V-neck t-shirt. If we go to the beanie offer, this doesn't have a design. And you're probably wondering, okay, well, how do we apply that same design that we just did for the V-neck to this beanie and to all the other upsells in our website? I am going to show you everything that you need to know about using Bricks Builder and Funnel Kit and the templating process and this sort of stuff. But before we get into this, I want to finish the last design that we need to do today, which is going to be the thank you page. So let's get into completing this thank you page design. So if we go back into our funnel, we'll add a new step. And then this is going to be a thank you page and other using short codes. And we'll start from scratch. And I'll just call this thank you. And this is for our beauty funnel. And I'll go add. And now that is in there. So I'll click in to edit this. And then if we go down, you can see we also have some short codes here. Because remember, when we take payment on the checkout form, we have the customer's email address. We have their first name, their last name, their their phone number, the order number, the order total. So we can output that using short codes into our design. So we will do that. And we also have the defaults for the order details and the customer details. So keeping that in mind, let's go up and I'll go edit template and then we'll go edit with bricks. And back in our demo funnel, I'll just open up the thank you page design. And this is what we're gonna be recreating today. So we'll add the header back in on this template. Then we'll have this, the person's email address, their order number is gonna be out there. So these are gonna be the short codes that I just showed you. The order details is gonna be in a white content area and then the footer down here. So let's start off and again, thinking of where we've gone and designed something similar to this, I think the section that we did in the upsells looks like this. So let's go there. So here we are in the upsells template and I'm just gonna right click and then go to copy. And then back here in our thank you page, I will paste that. And then we'll get rid of the short codes that aren't related to the thank you page. So this one here, that one there, and then the variations drop down. The button also we don't need, so I'll delete that. And the text we don't need there. Now, when I am designing these WooFunnels templates inside something like Bricks Builder, I do like to output the short codes in there and then preview it just to see what the content looks like so that I know what I'm actually designing. So back here in our sales funnel, I'll click into the thank you step. And then down here, let's go ahead and get the order details. So I'll copy this and then back here, here in this container for the content, I will go ahead and add a new element. And this is going to be a short code element. So I'll put that in there and then I'll paste that in there. And this is what it's going to look like. Now I know that this needs to have a white background. So I'll go and add a new class and we'll call this background white. And then under the style and background tab, I'll go up to here and I'll just make that a white color. I'll we'll exit out of editing that. And then let's go up and let's start editing the top area. So coming back here, thank you for your order. And then the person name. So I'll come back here and we'll put that into here. So the heading, I'll go to the content and I'll paste that in there. And this should be a H1 probably. So I'll make that. And we haven't set the font size for that yet. So I'll go to theme styles and then I'll go down to typography and then I'll go to the H1 and the H2 is five rem. So maybe we can make this six rem like that. Now for the person's name, coming back here to get our short codes, we will do the first name. So I'll copy this and then I'll put that into there and I'll go save. Now, if we just preview what we've done so far on the front end, again, we've run into an issue where short codes don't execute inside a heading element. So we'll go back and I'll just exit out of this. I'm going to go ahead and I'll add a short code and I'll put that in there. And then in this heading, we'll just cut from there and then we'll put it into the short code. And then this should be, it should be a H1. So I'll do that. So H1. And you can see that now that's rendered and output John, which is just the sample. And then let's go ahead and and add our text center class to this. So I'll apply that. So now that's centered. Now we'll add this, so I'll just copy that. And then let's just add that in there. So I'll paste that. So we are pleased to confirm your order number. So we have a short code for the order number. So back here, it is here. So I'll copy and then here your order number, I'll paste that there. And the short code isn't gonna execute in the basic text. So we need to go ahead and I'm just gonna duplicate. Well, I'm gonna call this the title and then we will duplicate this and then I'll I'll call this order meta text, something like that. Doesn't really matter. And then basic text, I will cut from there and then I'll paste it in there. And then coming back to the basic text, we have our text center class and our margin top small. So I'll just come up to here and apply that. So our margin top small class and I'll apply that. And then I can go ahead and just delete that. And we want to make this text a little bit larger. So if we go back here and just have a look at the size of this. So this is 24 pixels. So there is a CSS class called 
old text 2.5 rem, which would be 25. So that's good enough. So we'll do that. And we just need to make this our gray. So I'll search for gray and it is font gray. So that's good. Now we just need to add this line here. So again, that's going to be a dynamic short code that outputs the person's email address. So I'll just go ahead and duplicate that. And then we'll call this email address. And then we want to get rid of the font gray. And then in the content, I'll go back here and get the person's email. So I'll copy and I'll paste that in there. And then we might make this font black and then we'll go black and get out of that. And then we also want to do it bold. So we'll try 700 and we'll do that. And we want to remove the margin top. So I'll just go ahead and remove the margin top from that. Brings it closer to this. I actually quite like having this message up here. So I know it's not in the original design. I actually don't like the look of this card icon. I think it's like a little bit tacky, I guess. So I might actually leave that and we'll just update the text. So, so here we could say your order has been successful. Successful. Thank you for your order. We are pleased to confirm your order number. An email has been sent to dot dot dot. We'll just update to that. And then their email address. On this shortcode module, let's also add our drop shadow like this. And then let's add some spacing. So margin top large, we will add just to separate it a bit. And then we'll also add our margin bottom large and we'll add that and I'll get out of that. So let's save that and then see what this looks like so far. So the top looks good. Uh, this is a little bit wide. We need some padding along here. If I right click and just have a look at what's going on. And then looking at the form, there's a max width here of 980. So that's why it looks like there's padding on the sides, but not on the top. So let's go ahead and fix that. So back here for this, I might set a max width. So here I might go a thousand pixels wide. So let's add some padding all the way around it. So we'll do a new class and we'll do padding and let's try four rem and then we'll do, then we'll do four rem on all sides like that, which would be 40 pixels. So I'll save that. And then back here, let's reload. So that's definitely looking a lot better. And then we'll go down and we just need to add this blue section. So I'll go ahead and probably copy this from our set sales page. So here we are in our sales page and I'll just copy this. So command C and then back here, I will paste that at the end of the page like that. So step one, step two, step three. To be honest, I'm not exactly sure what that is supposed to be. So I'm just gonna leave this like this for now. Now, because we've used this in more than one place on our website, we will make that a global element. So I'll just right click here and I'll go save as global element. Now, if we go back to our sales page, I'll just get rid of this one. So I'll right click and then I'll go to delete and then I'll copy the global element from here. So I'll go copy and then I'll paste that at the end and now we can edit Edit it here and it will update wherever that has been inserted. So I'll just save the sales page and this is back to the thank you page. So I think I want to increase the spacing here. So let's go back into the hero section and we really only want to add padding at the bottom. So let's go ahead and click up here and we'll create a new class. So padding bottom and we could try eight rem and press enter and this would be eight rem and that's not taking effect. So why is that? So let's get out of this and troubleshoot and I can see so this is hard coded uh, when we copied and pasted it from our upsell template, this was hard coded to zero. So if we remove that, it gets the default theme settings, padding bottom for the section. And so that looks a whole lot better. So we didn't even need to go and create that other class, the PB, the padding bottom eight rem. So we can just remove that. So now that we've added the padding down there, I think this is too big now. So let's click back onto this and I'm just going to remove the margin bottom from here. So now that pulls it up and now this should be even. So I'm just going to save that. Now let's quickly check through the mobile layouts. We shouldn't have to do much because we copied and pasted most of this. So tablet portrait, that looks good. And then mobile landscape. Uh, let's actually reduce the line height on this. So I'll go into here and let's go line height and we'll apply our small just to pull that up. And then if we go down, this is all looking good again because we copied and pasted that. And then on the mobile portrait, this looks good. So this is all ready to go. And this is the front end. We'll pull that in and this is going to be our final thank you page design. So now that we've gone out and managed to set up every single step inside our sales funnel using Bricks Builder, let's jump in, set up the final things that we need to do in the sales funnel to put it live. And then we'll go ahead and do some test transactions so you can get an idea of the designs that we did today, how that would actually correlate into a working sales funnel in the real world. So let's jump in. And the first thing that we need to do is go into our sales funnel and add our products into here so we can go ahead and do the test transactions. Now, what's really cool about Funnel Kit is they give 
give you these error messages prompting you to add things so that you don't forget. So we can see the sales page. Obviously, we're not going to assign products there. The checkout form, we do need to assign products. And then also our upsells, we will need to assign them there. Now, if we go back to our sales page and we scroll down, we have to keep in mind that our sales page gives our customers the options to buy three products, this one, that one, or that one. And when they click this button here, they should go to the checkout step and this product should be selected. And then if they click this button here, this product should be selected on the checkout form and this one, the third product. So we do actually need to go to our checkout step and add three products there. So behind the scenes, I've gone ahead and added these products into WooCommerce that we'll be using in today's funnel. So let's go ahead and add the lipstick, anti-aging cream and the makeup brush to the checkout page. And then these could be an upsell here, the beauty bundle, and then we'll do a downsell for the eyeshadow palette. So while we're here, I'll also edit the sales page and we'll just add those images in there so it's easy to follow along for this next section. So coming down, I'll click this image here and I'm just gonna delete that for now and I'll select image. And then I'll go ahead and add the lipstick and I'll go insert. And then this one we will replace as well. I'll do the anti-aging cream. And then this one we will replace and we'll do the makeup brush and I'll insert that. And then I'll just rename these. So lipstick, anti-aging cream and makeup brush. So let's save that and we'll come back to this in just a second because we need to link these buttons to our checkout page and then auto select each of the products. But back here in our sales funnel, let's go into our checkout page step and then go to the products tab. And now let's go ahead and add these products. So I'll go add product and we'll add our lipstick and I'll go add then add product and then I'll add another product. And this is gonna be our cream, which is there, add product. And then I'll add the third one, which is the brush. And I'll go add and then add product. Now, if we go down a little bit, Funnel Kit allows you to change the way that a user can add products to their cart in this funnel. So we can restrict the buyer to only buy one of the products above, allow them to select multiple. So they'd get a checkbox on the checkout form. They could select which ones they want or we could force sell all of them as a bundle. So looking at the sales page, the sales page is sort of set up in a way that they can only select one of these products. So they can either get this one or that one because if they click this button, they're gonna go straight to the checkout page. So what I'm gonna do here is let's just say this is our website and we're only allowing the customer to buy one of these products. So you can get the lipstick or the cream or the makeup brush, but you can only select one of them because it's a big sale. Maybe this is just our lead magnet to get people into our sales funnel so that they see our upsells and downsells and that's where we make the real money. So we're selling these for a very low price and that's why we're limiting it to just one product. So here I might rename this. So I just adjusted this and it says, select your one product below. This is a big discount. So we are limiting one product per customer. Select the product you'd like to buy below and click add to cart. So I'll go ahead and save that. And then coming back to our checkout, we just wanna make sure this is selected. Restrict the buyer to select only one of the above products. So I'll go save changes. And now let's go up and go here and then go preview. So here we are. So a user would put in their name, phone number, etc., their billing details. If they need to insert a different shipping address, they could click this and put it in there. But for now, I'm not gonna do that. And then whenever they select a product here, so we could say, yeah, we want this, then it would deselect that and only select that. And then that adjusts the cart up there. They can change the quantity here and that updates it up here. And if you wanna edit anything to do with this area here, you'd come back to our checkout page here and then where we're in the products tab, we can go to the fields tab. And this is where we design our actual checkout form. So if I click down here on products, and then under the advanced tab, you could go hide quantity incremental and then update that. And then that would remove that from there. I'm gonna leave that up there for now. So now that we've gone ahead and finished doing our checkout step, let's go back to our sales page and link those buttons to auto select the correct product here. So back here in our funnel, I'm gonna go into our sales page step. And then under the design tab, if we go down, you'll see that we have a setting here and it says the next step button link. And it's our domain name. And then it has a question mark and then a URL parameter, which means next link equals yes. Now, if you copy this, so if I copy that there and I go into our sales page and then I view our sales page and then I edit with bricks. If I click on this button here, I am a button and I go select the link type and I go external URL and I paste that in there. So the question mark and that URL variable and I go save and then preview and then view on the front end. If I click this button now, that takes us to our 
checkout form. So what this URL parameter is, is it's a dynamic URL parameter that you can add into your pages inside of FunnelKit. And when the page loads, FunnelKit will get the URL to the next step in your funnel and then replace this with that URL. So it's a dynamic link. And that way you're not hard coding a link to the next step in the sales funnel. So most of the time you are going to want to use this. It's very easy. Just copy it from there. And then any buttons on a page and then any buttons that link to the next step in our sales funnel, we would go and use that. So this button down here, I would go and then I would go external URL, paste that in there and go save. And I'll reload the sales page, go down. And then if I click this, it gets the URL of the next step in the sales funnel dynamically and then redirects us to here. But where this is interesting is when we go up and we want to pre-select an option on the checkout page in the next step in the funnel, because we can't actually use that next step URL parameter that I just showed you. We need to do something a little bit different. So back in our sales funnel, I need to go to the checkout step. And this is a really good time to just edit the URL of our checkout step to make sure it's what we want it to be. So I'll go up here and I'll go edit. And this is a checkout page and I'll call this for the beauty products. One product only massive sales link that makes sense to you as a store owner. And then we'll change the permalink. So I'll do checkout page one beauty product and then I'll go update. So now I'm going to preview this and then I'm going to get the URL to our checkout page here. So the hard URL to our checkout page. I'm going to copy this and then back in our sales page, I'll go up to our buttons and I'll go to the add to cart button for the lipstick and I will go up here and do external URL like we we're doing before and I'll paste in the direct URL to the checkout page. And then on the end, you want to add this. So I'll just paste it. It's a question mark, arrow hyphen default equals, and the number you put here represents the product that will be pre-selected on the next step in, our, in the funnel on the checkout page. So this is gonna be one. So I'll copy this and then I'll go to this button and I'll go over to here, go external URL. I'll paste that in there. And we're gonna pre-select the second product here. And then I'll go over to here and then here and then external URL, paste, and we'll pre-select the third option there. So I'll go save and then let's reload the page. And now the lipstick here, if I click this add to cart button, that will go to our checkout step and it will pre-select the first option here. If we go back and I click here to add the anti-aging cream, I click this and now the anti-aging cream is selected. And lastly, the makeup brush, I'll go add to cart. And now that one's selected as well. Now, if you do know a little bit about coding and stuff like that, maybe you're wondering why we can't just go up to here and copy this and then go down here to there and then paste that in there. So we're using the dynamic URL variable to get the next step in the sales funnel and then do and arrow hyphen default equals default to. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work like this. I've reached out to the funnel kit support team and they've said, if you wanna use this URL parameter, you need to hard code to the next step in the sales funnel like I showed you before. But coming back into our sales funnel, that's the sales page complete now. We don't have to do anything else there. It's all set up and linked to the next step, which is a checkout page. Now on the checkout page, there's one more thing that I wanna do, which is to add an order bump. So let's click add order bump. And here I'm just gonna do something that's already in our WooCommerce database. I'm gonna do a beanie and then I'll go add and then I'll click into the order bump and I'll go add product. And then here I'll type beanie and there it is there. I'll go add product and now that's added. So let's give a discount here on the regular price and we'll do 10% off. And we'll add this to the cart items when they say yes to this. And we're gonna show this below the payment gateways. So I'm happy with that. So let's save that. And then we'll go to the design tab and then we can change the title here. So add beanie to my order, add our warmest beanie to your order. And you could describe the benefit there. The product image is just gonna pull the featured image from the product. I'm happy with that. You could do a custom. Up here, we can choose the design of it. If we go to choose skin, we can go through these. I'm happy with how it is. I, I like the yellow. I always select that as an option. And let's go to rules. So you could add rules when this would show. So here we could say, we only wanna show this 
if the cart items contains at least one and we'll do lipstick and select that there and save it. So now if we preview our sales page, which is here and we go down and we say, yes, I will get the lipstick that goes to the checkout form, lipsticks pre-selected. I'll just put in some details here quickly. We'll go down, go proceed to next step, free shipping, all good, proceed to final step. And because we have the lipstick in our cart, we have the option to add the beanie to our order. And I'll say yes. And then that's gonna add it to our cart over there. So as a store owner, you've just sold more of your products. And remember this shows after the payment gateways. So they put in their credit card details into Stripe and they're looking for the place order button. They see this, so they click that and then place order. It's highly effective and the uptake rate of this is generally quite high. If we go back to our sales page and I choose another product that isn't the lipstick, so I'll go anti-aging cream and put in some details and that's pre-selected. We go proceed to next step and then proceed to final step. You can see that our rule for the order bump has ran and because the item isn't lipstick, we aren't shown the order bump. And back in our funnel, we can see the beanie is all set up. We've got rid of the error messages with, that were there that were saying there's no product and no order bump and it's letting us know that this order bump has rules applied. So that completes our sales page and checkout step set. Up. Now we need to look at our upsells. Now this is very important before we do the next step. Because we went ahead and designed our upsells for the V-neck upsell offer, we need to go and save that from that offer into our Bricks templates so that we can then safely delete the offer but still have the template saved behind the scenes in Bricks Builder. So here I am and this is our V-neck t-shirt upsell and I'm going to go edit with Bricks and then I'll go up here to templates and I'm going to click save as template and I'll enter this so OTO, so one-time offer and V-neck design, whatever makes sense to you. The template type is going to be a single and we won't select a template bundle and I'll click save as template. So now that that's saved, we can go into our funnel and delete the offers and start from scratch and then we can apply this template. So I'll click into our brick sales funnel and then into our beauty upsells. And then I'll just go ahead and delete our V-neck t-shirt. So again, don't do this until you've saved the design from here as a template in Bricks. Otherwise you're gonna lose the entire design we did for the upsells. So I'm gonna click delete and then I'll go add offer. And then here we'll do our beauty bundle and it's gonna be an upsell. And then I'll click add and then I'll go add product and then I'll search for bundle and then click there and then add. And then I'll activate that. We'll give 50% off the regular price as a deal and I'll click save. Then we'll go add new offer. And this is gonna be our eyeshadow palette. I'm gonna make this a down sell. So I'll click add and then I'll go add product and I'll search for eyeshadow. And I'll click add and then add again and then activate this. We'll give 50% off the regular price and save. And now that's set up. So the way that this is gonna work is when somebody completes our checkout form, they will see this upsell for the beauty bundle. And we say, wait, get 50% off. If they say yes to this upsell, they skip the down sell and then they go to the next step in the funnel which is going to be our thank you page if they go over to here to our upsell for the beauty bundle and they say no then we down sell them and the next down sell is the eyeshadow palette so the current setup will only show the eyeshadow palette to the user if they say no to our beauty bundle if they say yes to this they'll go to the thank you page now you can add as many offers as you wanted in here upsells down sells whatever you want to do if you wanted to make sure your user saw the beauty bundle and then no matter yes or no to this they saw all the eyeshadow, then you would just go into here, go edit, and you would make this an upsell because a user will see every single upsell, but they only see a downsell if they say no to a previous upsell. But for now, I'm just gonna run with this as a downsell. So this is an upsell, this is a downsell. Now you also have some options down here. You can pause the screen and just have a look at what they are. But for what we're doing in today's video, we don't need to touch anything down there. So now that we've added our offers into our upsell step, let's go to our design tab. Let's make sure that the page builder is are they using short codes and we'll click start from scratch and then I'll click edit template and we want to make sure this is template default template and then we'll click edit with brick so now in here we want to apply that template that we saved before so I'll go up to templates and my templates the OTO v-neck I'll go insert template and now that's added it all in there and remember because these are dynamic short codes it hasn't saved the images or the product name of our v-neck t-shirt it will output the product details for the offer so if I go save and then we preview this and preview on the front end. We have our product image 
image up here. There's only one image for this product, so there's no slideshow. The name of the product, there's no variations for this. It's just a simple product, so there's no drop down. It just doesn't render. The button here to accept this, the no thanks. And if we go down, it's weird that it's output the, I don't know if this is expected behavior when you save a template inside Bricks Builder, but it doesn't seem, seems to have used placeholder images here. But yeah, let me know if this is expected behavior when you save a template inside a Bricks Builder. But for now, I'm not gonna edit these images because we're actually gonna do something different here when I show you how to take a template inside a Bricks Builder and apply it to all your offers. You'll see what I mean in just a second, but let's go back to our offers and I'll go back. So the beauty bundle has that design and then the eyeshadow palette, we can go and assign that template again there like we just did, or we could start from scratch and make the eyeshadow palette have a completely different design. Now, as a user, I found that me personally, I basically wanna have one design that applies for all my offers and then rarely I might wanna overwrite that default design with a unique design for one particular offer. So how do you go and do that inside a Bricks Builder using Funnel Kit? It's very easy to do. So let's go back to our beauty bundle and I'm going to click over here and I'm just going to go remove template and remove template. So now these offers here both have no design attached. Now let's go under bricks and then templates. And then there's our one-time offer template. So if I view this and go down, you can see the images have saved in the template. So I'm not sure what's going on there, uh, but this is how it is right now. Obviously the product image isn't outputting because this is isn't assigned to an offer, so there's no data to render. But what we can do now is we can apply this template to the post types for the offers. So let's go ahead and do that. So back here under bricks and templates, here's our template. Let's go edit with bricks. And now for this template, let's go up to settings and then template settings and then conditions and add a condition. And over here, we will say post type. And then here we will go down to offers. So this will apply to every post in the offers post type. So let's go save and then back in our offers. And I want to show you this because this is important as well. If I open up our funnels and then I go into our brick sales funnel and then here's our offers. If I just view these, you can see this is getting the default funnel kit template assigned to this. So even though on Bricks Builder, we've assigned a Bricks template to the offers post type, it's not rendering. It's using a funnel kit default. So the way that we get this to use our Bricks template is to go back and all we need to do is go start from scratch and that's it. Now it's in the default WordPress templating engine and that's what Bricks uses to then assign its template to the post type. So if we go ahead and preview this, you can see now it is applying there and we want to go back and then we just need to go to the eyeshadow palette and go start from scratch. And now if we preview that, you can see our template is now rendering for that one there as well. Now if I go edit offer and come back in here, you can see template default template. So by doing this, that is telling WordPress to use the WordPress templating engine and not funnel kits overwriting rules. And this here, the default templating system allows Bricks to go in and then overwrite the template. So it's important that for the for the offers, you set the default template over there. But by default, it should be this, but I just want to clarify in case you're seeing any weird errors, make sure you go into your offer and just make sure it's default template there. And then it should work with your Bricks template. Now, just to show you that this is in fact working, back here under Bricks and Templates, there's our template and we can see it's being applied to our our offers post type. If I go edit with bricks and I just change this heading over here to a font color of, let's just make it really obvious, red. And I go save. If we go back here to the bundle and reload, now that is red. And if we go over to here and reload, now that's red as well. So it's definitely applying, but I'll undo that because that's not what we want to do. So I'll save that. So now that we have that bricks template applying to the offer post type, the last thing that we need to do is assign the buttons to have yes, charge a credit card or no, skip this offer, go to the next step because we haven't actually done that. So let's go ahead and set that up. So it's really easy in Funnel Kit if we go down to Funnel Kit and then Funnels and then into our Funnel and then into our Upsells and then the Design tab. If we scroll down, you can see we got the short codes from here before, but now we're looking at these first two options here. So the Accept link and the Skip link. So the Accept is going to charge your credit card and the Reject goes to the next offer. So let's focus focus on the accept link. So I'll copy this and then back here in our bricks template, I'm going to go and edit this one with bricks. 
And then this button here, we want to make this an external URL and then paste in our accept link. And then I'll scroll down to the button at the bottom. So this one, and then paste our accept link there as well. So back here, let's do our reject or skip. So I'll copy from here and then back in our template, it's going to be here. So I'll click and then go to external URL and paste that in there. And it says reject link. Yes. And then we'll go up and then this one as well. So here, external URL, paste in there and then save. So that should be the last thing that we need to do in relation to our upsells page. And looking at our sales funnel, the thank you page, that doesn't need to go anywhere. So that's completed, no changes needed there. So this should be all set up ready for us to do a final test. So let's go and do that now. So here I am on the sales page and we have our hero, 20% off skincare. I might quickly edit this and I'm gonna just change and I'm gonna change the text on this button to make it a little bit more meaningful. So claim this deal. And to be honest, we might actually want this to scroll down to where they have to select one of the three products. So I'm just going to go down to here where they have to select a product and I'm going to click on this section here. And then I will edit the ID of this element and I'll write products and press enter. And now this section has the ID products. So if I go up and I edit this button, instead of this being a yes link to go to our checkout page, which is the next step in the funnel, let's actually remove that and do hash and then products and then press save. So I just quickly edited this heading to make more sense for the deal today. So I'll go save and reload on the front end and let's go through it now. So somebody would land on this page and it would say our three best selling products are on sale today. And when they click this button, claim this deal, we scroll them down. So they have to select one of those three products. Select your one product below to get a big discount. And then for us, let's say I want the lipstick. So I'll go add to cart and that's going to take us to our checkout page and select the lipstick stick by default. I'll put in my details. So uh, Grant Ambrose, I'll put in that. I'll go down and I'll say, yep, that's all good. So proceed to next step. And yes, free shipping. I'll go proceed to final step. And because we have the lipstick in our cart, the order bump rule was true. So now it's showing us the upsell for the beanie. And I will add that to my cart. So now there's two items in my cart. And then I go place order. From here, it goes, wait, get this bundle deal on sale today for a big discount. Now we actually hard coded 20% off there, which isn't right. So let's go and quickly edit the template. So here under bricks and templates, I'm just gonna go edit with bricks. And we also need to go to funnel kit and funnels and get these short codes. So I'll go to sales funnel bricks and then I'll edit our upsell step. And then I'll go to design and coming down here where all our short codes are that we've been using. We just wanna look for the sale or something to do with this. So save value, save percent. So I'll copy the save percent and then back in our bricks template, I'll go into here and I'll paste that in there. But because it's basic text, we actually need to render the short code. So we need to make this a short code module. So I'll quickly do that, put that in there. And then I'll copy the text from here and paste that in there. And now we just need to add our CSS classes again. So text center, margin top, small, that and that. So I'll quickly do that. Text center, margin top, so delete and then save. So back here in our test order, I'll just reload the page here. And now it's changed to 50%. So add this to order and get a 50% discount. Then going down the image, the name of the product, we could add it to our order with our yes link or skip it. It has our testimonials, that and that. So I might actually go, you know what? I don't want this today. So I'll go, no, thank you. And when I click that, it loads and then it takes us to our downsell. And it says, okay, well, if you didn't want that, how about a 50% off discount on our eyeshadow palette? And we could go down and say, yes, please add that to my order. That charges their card. Yes, it's been added to their order. Now we land on the thank you page. It says, thank you for your order grant. We are pleased to confirm your order number 493. An email has been sent to my email address. It lists the main lipstick product plus the order bump plus the downsell we said yes to. It has the total down there and it's all in our design that we designed.